Okay, in the traditional way, uh, we start off everything with a prayer or a song of some kind. And I wonder if, Catherine, you would be willing to uh, sing us a song or say a prayer? Kia ora, Maria. Good morning. Yes, I'm happy to help, as always, and be directed by my elders. <laughs> Um, so if everyone's uh, settled in, uh, we'll begin. Ko te pūte mōre te wel te aka te rea Ko te waunui te kune te fe te kore te po Ki ngā tangata māri nā rangi rāwa ko papa, ko te nei te timatanga o te ao. Ko te nei te timatanga o te ao. Whakataka te hau ki te uru, whakataka te hau ki te tonga, kia mākina ki ngā ki uta. Kia mātara tūtaki tai, e hi aki ana te ātā kura, he tio, he huka, he hauhu, tūturu whakamaua ki a tīna, haumie, huie, tāe ki e. Thank you, Catherine. Welcome, everybody. Ang Wan. Kelamakamna Kelam Kasuda Ting Unanganwe Unanganatota Kuya. I said hello, my other self, in my language, which is Unangan. We don't use the word Aleut that Westerners use because that was given a name given to us by our former oppressors. We call ourselves Unangan, which means the people. And uh, we've been in the Bering Sea for over 10,000 years, and we're still there. Uh, and um, um, I wanted to uh, uh, explain that um, my, my traditional name is Kuya, which means like an arm extending out from the body, a carrier of ancient knowledge into modern times. A messenger. Um, it was a name given to me by the last Kuya that was left alive amongst my people when I was four years old. And now I'm living the legacy of this name. Now I have here an eagle wing fan that was given to me by uh, Rita Blumenstein, um, who is no longer with us. She, she's done visiting this world. And um, uh, uh, she was the spiritual advisor for the Indigenous Council of the 13 Grandmothers. And uh, she, she said, uh, you know, uh, you need two wings to fly, one for physical and one for spiritual. Without One without the other cannot fly. And soon you'll get your other ego wing. And a year later, I was given an ego wing uh, by a medicine person from the Lakota, and that's uh, uh, on the door here. Uh, and so uh, I'm living the legacy of my name. Uh, I uh, uh, work for a group of elders from all over the world called the uh, Wisdom Weavers of the World. And if Yao, who is my wife and partner, could put up uh, the link for the website for the Wisdom Weavers. Um, we met in 2017 in Kauai, um, and, uh, and uh, we were greeted and warmly welcomed by the land, by the spirits of the land, and, and by the people of the land. And we conducted ceremonies every day every morning at sunrise, and then we talked during the day. 
and um, what we what the elders had to say they wanted to go to the rest of the world and so on the website there's a film a 14 minute film uh, that contains the messages of the, these elders to the world and we're all we're on all social media um, and uh, their message to the world it was seen it was translated to 15 different languages and seen by over 80,000 people the first day and these messages are, are are messages from the elders to the world and what they have to say is contained in this film but essentially uh, I'm going to summarize uh, this, what they say, and that is that we need to change our consciousness now. Uh, that the uh, consciousness of the mind to shift our co that consciousness to the heart. Um, and uh, traditionally, uh, all the indigenous peoples of the world uh, understood that the heart would tell the mind what to do. And the mind's job is to implement what your heart is telling you. And uh, today we reversed it. The Yupik elders here in Alaska call this the reverse society or the inside out society because we reverse all the laws for living. And uh, these laws we call the original instructions. You've heard this many, many times. You know, the original instructions. But what are the original instructions? They uh, were given to us by uh, who we call Aho, the great spirit, the spirit that lives in all things, the maker uh, in our language. And uh, it, it's not something that we invented over thousands of years. Uh, most people uh, don't understand that we, we received it from Aho. And these uh, are laws that we live by today amongst the indigenous peoples across the world who are members of First Nations. Um, and we, um, um, in shifting from the mind to the heart, the Western world uh, sees the, the mind as a seat of intelligence. It's logical and it's rational. And uh, when you go to the heart as the seed, the true seed of intelligence, uh, it is a, a, a transrational. And, uh, and so the heart, from our perspective, guides us impeccably right. It contains love, patience, compassion, understanding, uh, and all these things that uh, we seek today, but we don't know how to access it instead of uh, uh, just using the mind. And uh, indeed, the people know that the mind uh, lives in the past, that guilt, shame, remorse, anger, rage, jealousy, all these things that are emotions from traumas of the past live with us here today or fear, which is projection into the future of something that hasn't happened yet. Every place except the proverbial now. And we understand that in the now is the only place that is in connection with the divine. And that uh, we're spending our time in the past or in the future, but never present in the moment. And so um, we, we, we understand that and live it every day. Um, and that, uh, you know, when, when we follow the heart, uh, we know that it will tell us what we need to do today in the face of daunting challenges 
to humans and other creatures and other living things. Um, and they are daunting challenges. All the, the political uh, corruption, the, the wars, the, the, the violence against women, and, and all these things, uh, uh, and ultimately the violation of Mother Earth um, comes from this place of uh, being in the mind. Because when when we first left ourselves, we separated from ourselves by separating from our hearts. And that separation lives with us, within us, each one of us, every day. And it's when you separate from yourself, it's easy to separate from others. And, uh, and then to separate ultimately from Mother Earth. And uh, so the elders that I work with say, you know, people of good heart are focused on stopping the, the, what they consider to be the negative things that are happening that are not in harmony with Mother Earth. And, but they said, we forgot that we are energy beings. We contain the energy from the spiritual, physical, and mental arenas that are within us. And that when we pour our spiritual energies into stopping something, that makes the thing that we're trying to stop bigger. It doesn't work. And what they're saying is business as usual is not going to help. Uh, in fact, it will do the worst kind of things that will increase in, in energy uh, as we pour our energy into those things. They said that instead, we must focus on the world we wish to see without reaction to anything else. And uh, this is, um, and it has to be led through ceremony, through women gathered together in sisterhood, and through the men who uh, have to remember that our role is to protect the sacred space of women who, uh, so that they can do their work because the women are going to lead during this time. And, uh, you know, my women teachers uh, explained to me that uh, I, I'm a man and how could I be speaking about this? And they said that, uh, unfortunately, during these times, it's going to take a man to open up the door for women uh, to do their work. And uh, that's uh, what I'm doing now. And so Mother Earth has survived for billions of years. She's going to survive for billions more. Uh, uh, it's a question about whether or not we humans are going to live and survive during this time. And that we uh, must understand that we are not saviors for Mother Earth. You know, when the pandemic first hit um, uh, in the world, um, the world uh, action stopped. And what happened was the animals were showing up for where people were uh, all the time. Uh, you could see the Himalayas from India uh, for the first time in 30 years. And the ozone layer above the Arctic heals. This is Mother Earth showing us how quickly she can help. She can survive, she can heal herself if we are in a place of real harmony and real human being. And so, um, what ultimately, what uh, the last thing I will say is that uh, there are many prophecies around the world that say that uh, a time is going to come when indigenous people will be looked, for, looked to for guidance by the world. And the elders that I work with say the time is now. And that, uh, you know, 
we need to uh, feel this and think about it. Uh, and the reason why indigenous people are, are uh, will be looked to for guidance is because of the original instructions that we all hold to dearly uh, within our cultures. And so with that, um, I would just like to open it up to the indigenous people to talk about what it is they think we need to do now. Earth repair and all the things that are being done uh, uh, that is advocated for by earth repair is good. Uh, and because it will buy time, if you will, for us, and hopefully we don't have uh, uh, calamities that end up destroying the entire world for humans. When I met with Don Alejandro, who was the uh, keeper of the day calendar for the Mayan, we met in Canada for a week and told each other stories. He said, no, the people who will negotiate this time the best are going to be people of the fire. And people of the fire are, means people of the heart. The ones who are going to go astray and will suffer greatly more than uh, the people of the fire are going to be people who are not in the heart. And going to the heart is not an easy thing. Uh, I know, I, I, when I first did this over 50 years ago, um, I, I was at the peak of patriarchy. And um, um, I, I was commissioner of commerce and economic development for the state of Alaska. I led 17 boards and councils. And I dropped all of it in one day. And what happened was people who called me friends, obviously because of my position of power in the patriarchy, vanished. They were, I didn't have any more of these kinds of friends. And I was thrown upon myself. And uh, I had to look at my mirror instead of their mirror of who I am. And uh, that began my journey. Uh, and it's, it's not an easy one. And what is called for now is for people to have the courage. Uh, the Hopi and Maori say uh, you must uh, leave the sides of the riverbank, move toward the center, find those who have done the same, and celebrate. What that means is let go of the sides of the riverbank means letting go of all human attachments. Going to the center means going to your proverbial heart center and the center of the river of life because it knows where it's going. We don't. Find those who've done the same means find those who have had the courage like you did to jump. That, according to the elders that I work with, say that is, it's going to become the new definition of tribe. And so here in Earth Repair, we are meeting other members of our tribe. So with that, um, uh, we will open it up for discussion amongst the indigenous people uh, about what they feel needs to be done. So. Um, yeah, would you monitor that and um, see who's uh, volunteering to talk? Sure, Catherine just put something in the chat box that I feel um, could be an, a good a good way to start. Catherine, Kia ora, Ilarion. Uh, thank you for those words. It's um, always great to hear reinforcement some of us on the call um we've been waiting a long time <laughs> for a, a space like this for a conversation like this and to be honest uh the work that i do is quite intellectual in the research policy human mm -hmm. rights advocacy space but 
But this is hard work. And personally, um, I have been asking the universe to provide a channel, a literal channel, as well as a spiritual channel, <laughs> through which we can advance this very um, critical work. So I put in the chat, inspired by something you said, I was triggered. Um, you said, this is heart work. The people of the fire, people you know who have heart and emotions and tapping into that. So it just made me go, oh, that's really interesting because we have a word here in Aotearoa, the Māori First Nations peoples. And a reminder, there are many... Māori First Nations peoples, not just one Māori peoples. I think at last count, I, I might have mentioned this to another on, on the call a couple of days ago, um, I think at last count officially, there's like 80 plus different peoples, Māori peoples. I belong to two of them, Ngāti Kuri and Te Rarawa in the far, far of the North Island of Aotearoa. Um, but we have some similarities, even though languages, dialectical differences and such, but there are similarities. And one of those is some key, key ideas, key words. One is courage. And you can see in the chat, manawa nui. Manawa nui is one of our words for courage. However, um, as with many indigenous words, you can uh, deconstruct them I don't like that word because it's like doing a D something to it. You can further analyze them, let's say, and understand them in more depth by looking closer, having focus into the component parts of the word. So manawa nui is actually made up of many different individual words. Um, the first one I went to was manawa, which is heart. <laughs> awesome. And the other word is nui which means to expand or be enlarged, grow. So manawanui, courage. But inside the word manawanui is the word ma for clarity, which generates such words like marama, knowledge, you know, um, Māori, not Māori, the peoples, but Māori, Māori meaning like the um, cosmic energy, life force, life force. Um, the, in Manawa is also the word wa. You can see it there, wa. Wa references time. wa. what's the time? Or space, spatial, you know, locality, place. It's, it's time and it's space. <laughs> This is why, you know, I have a little giggle to myself when scientists go, oh, we've figured it out, you know, all the physics, the molecular and the quantum. And I'm like, yeah, okay, well, get in line because Indigenous peoples were there first. Um, yeah. Kia ora, a colleague of mine on the call, Peter. Kia ora, Peter. Mana. Ma also references mana. Mana is authority, sovereignty, which we all have. And um, oh, there's so much there. I don't want to take it. I'd, I'd rather share the time. Um, but just to, just to reinforce, the the key to the healing of the world lies in our our reo me on tikanga, our languages and our traditions. Really does. I totally believe that. I don't think that's really being egotistical of indigenous peoples to believe that. I mean, just look at the state of the world and look how long. Indigenous peoples have been very gently in many ways going, hey, hello, here we are, here we are. You want to maybe share the tent, maybe have a chat with us, maybe we can collaborate to help find solutions, build solutions, co-create. It's been frustrating as, ugh, to be, you know, marginalised, you know, as a defender. Um, as someone who stands for, for Mother Nature, Father Sky, it's, it's super frustrating to be marginalized. I feel so over it. I'm, I'm sorry if I offend anybody, but I just, but you know, we, many of us have been doing this for decades, our whole lives, our past lives for that matter. My ancestors, my tupuna, 
were on this trail and many of you too. It's time. I'm, I'm, I'm tired of people saying, oh, we're going to start now. I'm like, oh, 180 plus years ago, my people started this conversation. Hello? You've got to remember. People must remember. Okay? This isn't news to us. It's kind of tiring. It's exasperating, to be honest. So um, um, I just want to express my gratitude for being in the space because it's so energizing to not have to intellectualize. You know, I can just put park that, boop, park that for a bit and just go, go uh, into my heart and uh, up to my higher self. In community with others, boy, that is so awesome. It's a great place to be. So thank you, Ilarion. Oh, and, um, I did say to um, Yael on the call, um, if, if Matua Ed was here, he's got other um, commitments, but he inspired me, and I've never done this. This is the first time, I don't know if you can see, to set up all of my uh, my taonga, we call them taonga, all my artifacts and things from all around, you know, the travels that I've been on and we've been gifted things. I've got like seeds, seeds here from different, you know, Places representing, like I've got rice from Asia and I've got hemp seeds from different places of the world and I've got, um, what did you get? Flax seeds. I don't know if you can see them. Flax seeds. You know, um, acknowledging the seeds is so, 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 so super important because it's a metaphor for us. It's a fractal universe. It's a metaphor for us. We're the seeds. And this here is like, we're throwing out the seeds. And boy, talk about guerrilla gardening. I really hope. (laughs) I know. I know. The seeds will take root. If any of you all into guerrilla gardening, I highly recommend it. It's very very therapeutic. Um, And I've also got artifacts here which remind me of our animal family. I, I particularly wanted the frog because the frog is about um, transformation, eh? The frog. And I also have some healing medicine here. I've got some, um, there must, does anyone know the ex- an indigenous name for marijuana here? And also our very, very great friend, the harore, the mushroom here, because these are our healing medicines and another healing plant of ours from Aotearoa here. This is um, what we call kawa kawa, and you, and this is very good for cleaning the blood. So we drink this as a tea. That's what I've got here, my tea. Even my my teacup, I've got Gandhi's. Man, I'm such a geek. I've got Gandhi's, you know, be the change. Um, oh, um, so back to this. So this is a blood healing plant. We, we can use it as a tea for many things. But if you notice, it's shaped like a heart. Big giveaway, bit of a tip. <laughs> some of you know, some of our healing plants are like screaming at us, hey, use us for this. We're good for that. We need to bring back all of these knowledges. Oh, I also have an egg. I was I was told to keep an egg amongst the tonga on this table. And and music, you know, noise makers. And these are also from you know um different travels I've been on and little things, and also. This might trigger you. This. Because this needs healing by Jingos. This needs healing. Actually, I'm sorry, we're probably going to have to transcend and trans just transmute and find a whole different economic system, which is to say, not uh, news again to us because Indigenous peoples have our own systems. <laughs> Uh, man, I feel like I'm preaching to the choir here. Uh, last thing before I, I give the floor back. This is what I do with my water that I drink. Um, you know, we were talking about the um, miraculous nature of water. It's the only element that we know of. Someone may please correct me. That can be all things, solid, liquid, and gas. Um, apparently there's another element plasma which has come to light but um, I'm I'm not skilled enough to talk on that but I can talk on solid liquid and gas and this is the only thing that can do it it also transmits data so I write on um, my jar different qualities that I wish to be imbued with and I leave it like overnight 
whatever, drink it the next day. So that's that's a bit of a tip. I love practical tips if, if anyone has, oh, Cherokee word for cannabis is, oh, nice, Alicia. Gatun, I I'll, I'll, might let you speak more on that. Thank you for that. I'm going to use, may I use that word instead of marijuana? Because I, yeah, it's got a stigma. Anyway, I'll, I'll pass it on. Uh, also, I have my, I brought my, again, I brought my talking stick along with me, which has the eagle feather. I want to acknowledge um, First Nations peoples oh, around. Oh, and also, sorry, I'm again. Um, I brought the Mayan calendar just to, because um, a friend gave us a, um, a copy of the calendar. If anyone is able to speak, because this is the time we're in right now, it's big times. So um, thank you very much, Ilarion, for giving me the floor, and I'll hand it back. Sure Thank you, Catherine. And thank you for sharing the things that you carry uh, behind you. You know, uh, one time uh, an anthropologist came to St. Paul Island in the Pribilofs in the middle of the Bering Sea where I was born and uh, noticed that uh, we we're using a particular plant uh, to uh, uh, that our stories tell us uh, of how we got this plant and, and what it means. And what it was, was a plant that contained a poison uh, that is used when we hunted whale. We, we didn't use harpoons. The whale hunters were on singular kayaks by themselves and, and hunting the great whale. And uh, what this poison does is, is it goes into the whale and directly to their heart. It doesn't go to any other place. And the whale does not know it's going to die. Uh, and um, this is something uh, when he, the anthropologist asked the elder, um, how did you get this? You, you watch the animals die when they eat it or... Uh, you know, you found out for yourself or what? And, they, and he said, no, we talk to the plants. And this is something that indigenous people understand. It's called the original language of one, where we could talk with anything in creation. That used to be the original language of one before the great imbalances started in the world. Okay. Um, yeah, I'll do it. Can we invite, thank you so much. Can we invite um, Elder Ia Tahira, our black elder, to please share some wisdom? Yes, Ia, welcome. Thank you. Um... You know, sometimes I feel like when we talk about indigenous, I lost, I feel like the African cosmology is left out of the equation. And it's just now beginning to surface. And when we look at the original order that we came in, we know that there was four directions and there was four general tribes, if we want to do it that way, or four general races that were supposed to hold this percenter on the earth. And that was a dark race, the red, and we can go. That is in documented in the indigenous text. And we, all we got to do is go back and look at that. And I think this is a time where we are called to look at this transformation and what my elder called the old dispensation. What has it taught us to step into a new dispensation? And so it's like we find in a common language a common way of coming together and recognizing all those pieces that are broken. And imagine that it's a cup. Imagine that it's a coffee cup or a tea cup and it's scattered. And how now do we bring those pieces back together? And one of the things that come to me is like, when I listen to my elders are remembering that there are no accidents in creation. And we, we can understand there are no accidents in creation. We can listen to creation voice. And creation said, I need to experience myself in all my dimensions. And then when she comes back together, she said, now 
I express myself in all these dimensions, hate, separation. Now, how do I come back together? And we are those voices of that creation standing now at this threshold to answer that question. Because when we look metaphysically and cosmologically, it, it forces us to raise our own sense, our own consciousness, our own way of seeing and our own way of remembering. There's, there's nothing new. We are remembering what got broken, what, what, what got broken in this, in this old dispensation. So how now do we come back to what Elias called the heart and remember that place? And one of the things I hear is that one of the things we have to look at the forgiveness part. We can sit and in, in, in grieve and talk about who did what, but is there a place for us to look at how do we come to that place to forgive and reconcile and bring forth that which will bring us and mend the way for all of us, for all of creation? It seemed to me that is our big call as the elders and the indigenous people who stand at this threshold of rebirth of a new earth. That's what it feels like for me. And that we are being called to stand here and create a, a, a like-minded conversation and agreement of how we will come together and hold that lantern for a new earth. How were we the elders today? And I feel when we talk about the women, the women hold that, that because they are the spark of creation itself. And when the women can sink into that place of forgiveness and hold in the womb in a way where they connect to the womb of creation itself and hold that up and begin that healing work there for our planet. Those are some of the things I see are calling to us today. So again, I am Ia Tahir. I live here in St. Croix, the founder of the Council of Elders here. I am born a Mississippi um, person. I was born in Pocahontas, Mississippi, on the land of the Chickawa people, the Cherokee. It was three tribes that lived there, Natchez, and all of those, and I just gone, been going back, pulling those pieces together, because they too are part of my my lineage as a as a creation. I'm part Irish, have Irish ancestry, I have Native American ancestry, I have African ancestry, and I think all of those pieces call to me to reconcile and acknowledge them as part of my evolution as a human species on this planet. So anyway, with that said, I put the feather back in the circle. And so thank you for calling me. Thank you. Thank you for those words, Leo. Uh, you know, I was given something He reminded me of by an elder, and he said that uh, this um, this thing here is uh, a sacred staff that is being used before uh, in the beginnings of any of the ceremonies where it clears out the negative energy, and you will notice that it has the four different colors: red, white, black, and yellow, and um, and on one end is an owl feather, which gives you the medicine of seeing in the dark. Um, it's uh, uh, so in my tradition, we recognize that all the four sacred colors are uh, together as one. That that we don't uh, look at. Uh, uh, the world in the same way that many people do. Uh, when we say on one amongst our culture, um, hello, my other self, I like to use a, 
uh, a rubber glove, your uh, kitchen rubber glove, you blow, blow it up. And these fingers think they're human, but in fact, they're only one breath. And uh, this is something that uh, many people have forgotten. Um, okay, now let's uh, bring it open to others who want to speak. What okay. time? Can you ask Melanie Gorbachev? Me Melanie, are you there? Melanie Gorbachev. Gorbachev? Yeah. Miss Bojo, hello, I'm here. Would you like me to introduce myself? Uh, yes, please. All right. Bojo, I did a Mamangana Duk. That's greetings to all of my relatives. Thank you for listening. Biktagong Nishnabeg and Donjaba, Kitagonzibi and Donjaba, Biktagong Nishnabeg, Ejinikade, Ishkinago, and GIN. So I'm Moose Clan, and I introduced you um, to my spirit names, how I'm known in Ojibwe in the spirit world. Malani and Dijnikaj Jaganashi Ayang, Malani Goodchild, so named after my dad Delaney and my mom Melinda. That's how I'm known in English. I'm here in Manitouaki, that's Turtle Island. Um, in my homelands. So I'm in what's currently known as uh, Sault Ste. Marie, Ontario. This is Bawating, the place of the Three Fires Confederacy, the Potawatomi, Anishinaabe, and um, Odawa. Anishinaabe Kwe Anda, I'm an Anishinaabe woman. And I'm um, very honored to be here and, and listen to, the, to what's being offered um, in terms of teachings from the elders. This is uh, the homelands of my grandparents. And so my grandparents on my maternal side are from two different First Nations and on my paternal side are also from two different First Nations. So I'm actually from here, Kitagonzibi First Nation, which is Garden River. Uh, I'm a member of Biktagong, Nishnabig, Pick River First Nation. And then I have a grandma from Arrowland in Treaty 9 and another grandma from uh, Kuchiching in Treaty 3. And so I have family in about eight different communities here in Northwestern Ontario. And I'm, I'm a doctoral student uh, in studying social and ecological sustainability at the University of Waterloo. I teach part-time at the University of Vermont. But, um, but what I study is systems thinking and complexity. And I work with elders, um, a number of different elders and language speakers because I'm not really decolonizing uh, or indigenizing that work. I'm kind of re-indigenizing it uh, because of our complexity capacities as Anishinaabe people around the world. Um, it, we say in our language, Gedena um, Windaman, and Gedena Windaman means uh, we are all related. And I know the Lakota and others, you know, say that as well. Many other nations in the Takoyasin and the Shkakemakwe. <clears throat> which is Mother Earth, when I say uh, for the water, for the food, and we thank Mother Earth and the, the Confederacy here, the Three Fires Confederacy and our clan system and all of those things that, that our ancestors taught us and protected for us. And many of them went to, um, to jail. Um, when those ceremonies were illegal, I'm the benefactor of that. Um, our ceremonial grounds are just a few uh, minutes down the road, about 15 minutes. And, um, and I think that our, our communities are dealing with the big, the big issues of um, you know, anthropogenic climate change, but we're also dealing, continuing to deal with the heartbreaking um, realities of, of settler colonialism. And so my community just, just buried another young person to opiate addictions. And in some of our communities, we're, we're losing a, a young person a week um, to overdoses. So, um, so that's why I study what I study. Uh, I study complexity theory. And uh, maybe I'll just wrap up sh and share that um, I think the complexity framework of uh, the medicine wheel, um, which you know the elders were talking about those four sacred colors uh, and our, our elder, that just shared, you know, that was the teaching I was given. 
I was given the teaching of, you know, the medicine wheel before I ever saw it really in pictures. It was, was part of our ceremonies and it was a prophecy that there were these wonderful beings that were from all the four different directions and that, that we would come together and the Ashkemadzik would come together, the new peoples, and that's part of the seventh fire prophecy. But we would come together when we were mature enough. You know, we were so immature, many, I think, many nations as humans. When we first were in contact with each other, uh, it was a clash and it was violent and, and we found each other's words um, threatening. But now we recognize that those, those multiple ways of knowing, and, and there's an elder, Jim Dumont, who talks about um, different ways of knowing, uh, and, he, and he talks about the medicine wheel in the four directions. And so when we say Seman Nabog Danaki Wade Nang Kwab Nang Zhao Nang Minwa Ninga Bianang, those are the four directions, the four beings that Creator put in those directions to look after us. We call on those four beings, and He talks about it as ways of seeing, uh, relating, knowing, and doing. And so to me, that's a complexity framework. Complexity science is about um, how we have a simple, you know, when we're responding to the events of things, we're in that crisis response mode. There's an iceberg model, some of you have probably heard or seen of that, and you go further down the iceberg and you really start to see the underlying causes of these deep-rooted problems. And it goes right back to the here in the doctrine of discovery and, and terra nullius and the dehumanization of indigenous peoples. And so when we when we go back up the the iceberg model, we see the symptoms of deep-rooted things, and then we respond to the symptoms. That's called simple. And sometimes those, those responses are complicated. But what complexity does is it, it recognizes um, irreducible wholeness. And it recognizes what our ancestors understood in that medicine wheel, which is that everything is interconnected. And so really the, the unit of analysis for understanding so much of this is is about the relationships between different variables and dynamics, not individually studying each each um, variable. So that's uh, my family says it sounds like rocket science when I start talking like this, but it really is um, it really is uh, intuitive uh, to human beings uh, to think in systems. We know that we're a part of systems, and so. Um, so I'll stop sharing there, and, and thank you for the opportunity. Um, here, Apajigo Miigwech Bizindariag. Thank you for listening. Thank you very much for that. Um, um, you know, in terms of what's happening to the world, the young people are um, now very angry, very frustrated, they're depressed, and all these kinds of things that are leading to the things that they're experiencing because we, of what we've done to the world. And uh, what they need, in my opinion, is hope. And uh, that hope comes from people like yourself, both the, the witnesses to this discussion, as well as the indigenous people who are here leading the way, um, that we must let them know that uh, we there are things in the world uh, that we don't see. Uh, we only see the physical, we believe the physical, but we know that there is the unseen world and different dimensions and that uh, they are all helping us during this time of great changes to Mother Earth. Uh, and one last thing is, um, you know, the world is accelerating so badly uh, and everything is fast. Uh, and, uh, you know, even the talk of the younger people is faster than what, what we're talking about. Uh, and Native people understand, you know, here in Alaska, we've got uh, many different, we've got the most number of tribes in all of North, uh, North America, actually. Uh, 220 plus tribes, and they all come from villages where people act slower, talk slower, and move slower. We call it earth-based pace. And what that means is that we need to slow down in our minds and in our hearts, uh, physically and spiritually, 
in order to communicate, commune with Mother Earth. And the only way that we can hear the lessons that come from Mother Earth is uh, when we slow down enough to the pace of Mother Earth, then we have a chance of hearing what she has to say in all the elements. Like the eagle, it teaches us that we can soar high and see far. Like the salmon, that teaches us that we too can come home to a role, to the maker, to the creator. Like the trees, it teaches us that we need to be strong in order to, uh, need to be rooted in order to be strong. Uh, and uh, all these different kinds of teachings for people who know how to listen. And it doesn't mean listening with your mind. It just means listening with your heart. Okay. Uh, who's next? Um, I think maybe Mindahi, because it's getting a bit late. Though when you speak of young people, I'm looking at Shai. But maybe Mindahi and then Shai. Okay. Uh, welcome, Mindahi. Good that you're here. Hello. Uh, hopefully, my Wi Fi doesn't go off. It's a work on how it's a way to help you. In a way, in a young cake, shall I should see shall I move shall I mania? He come a day or car come a day. Makata Makami. With the permission of the uh, four sacred elements and the tree of life in the center, heart of Mother Earth and the heart of Father Sky, and the beautiful celestial bodies that uh, are watching us, are uh, guiding us. Thank you so much for this opportunity to be among you and this circle. And this circle is growing little by little, it's growing because we are in this unification process. And we, when we talk about unification process, it's about coming together from the south and the north, the east and the west. You know, the prophecies are telling us to act, not just to wait. And uh, the eagle and the condor are coming together all the peoples from north to the south, but also uh, from the east to the west, the dragon and the phoenix. So this is the time to remember who we are as human beings. How come uh, we have uh, kept in difficult times, sometimes more than 500 years, sometimes more than 3,000 years, and even almost 8,000 years ever since, some people began to go away from the original instructions. So we are dealing today with this uh, modern way of thinking, this anthropocentric way of thinking, which is also in some of the sacred books, the so-called sacred books, that is in the, this colonial mindset. So I've been uh, learning late, lately how this domination code has been affecting us, even in the most remote areas. So we have had this courage to survive, to live in peace and harmony with Mother Earth, thanks to our, our principles, to our ancestral wisdom, and also through, uh, and also to our ancestral philosophies and cosmovisions. So today we are dealing with this other way of thinking every single day, and the systems are killing Mother Earth. These uh, institutional arrangements that, that are being uh, imposed uh, for centuries. I'm just uh, calling here to remember how these papal woes 
the so-called uh, that was born the doctrine of discovery, not just in the Americas, but in Africa and, and elsewhere. How this had, uh, has affected us in every single uh, way in, in our, our communities, even in the, in the uncon so-called uncontacted tribes. Because climate change, climate crisis is everywhere. And this systemic crisis is killing the collective, is killing the diversity, is provoking uh, not just cultural erosion, but biological erosion. In one term is provoking biocultural erosion. So biocultural heritage is at, is at danger, is in danger. Biocultural erosion is happening every single day. We are losing so much, so many species around the world, not just from the plant, uh, plant uh, wisdom or plant kingdom, but also from the animal and the mineral. Because today, even the, you know, the new technologies are needing these rare earths and those are in original nations and people's territories mostly. Because it's where the sacred sites are, is where we had to, to keep and be in alignment. And that's the reason why 80% of biodiversity of the world is in our territories. Let's not take it for granted. As I said the other day, it's not just easy. It's a lot of work. It's responsibility. It's reciprocity. And now is regeneration. How we can bring ancestral wisdom to modern times is so difficult. Because uh, we are dealing with the I, the individual, the greed. We are dealing with all that this mindset, anthropocentric thought that is being taught in the universities ever since in the primary schools or the elementary schools. So we need to recover collective dignity. Not just as original nations and peoples, but as human beings. Because it's not just their problem, it's our problem. It's everybody's problem. So this is uh, what we are uh, thinking about how we can come together. Because nation states now, they cannot do it alone. Even with the support of technologies or the support of multinational companies or companies everywhere. But the, the ancestral wisdom is key. For transcendence is key for survival and for the good living. Because what is calling is killing Mother Earth is a good life. Consumption and overconsumption. So just think about what we eat now in many communities, in our communities. Why do we have so many sicknesses, modern sicknesses, like sclerosis, like diabetes, name it. What kind of food we are eating? Do we produce our food? So we are in this, in this space now, and many, many of the young are going to the big cities, to the metropolis. How can we expand this ancestral wisdom even to the metropolis? How can we interrelate rural and urban? How can we bring Mother Earth to the dialogue? And not just Mother Earth, Grandmother Moon, Venus, and the celestial bodies that are very meaningful for us because they teach us how to live in cycles, not live faster and not slower, but in cycles, in harmony. So I want to touch about very briefly about something that we were 
said in 2013, when we gathered more than 150 spiritual leaders in Sierra Nevada de Santa Marta with the four peoples in Colombia, with the Kogi, the Cancuamo, the Wiwa, and the Waco. We were there and we received these instructions, but the first one, I'm, I'm just going to refer to the first one today. Acknowledgement of the spiritual authority of original nations and peoples. Through the creation of the, and reactivation of the grand councils, the councils, the continental councils, the councils of all the regions around the world, and ultimately the grand council of, composed by 52 spiritual elders who represent by your regions and sacred sites. So we can help, we can support this transition, this cleansing time. We are living in this cleansing time from May 3rd, 2013, when the long account of the Mayan, Otomi, Toltec, and Aztec calendar ended. You know, and we are accomplishing by May 3rd, 2026. We have a chance. Depends on us how we are entering the new time, the new dawn. And what is called the new dawn, the prophecy of the new dawn is about how we can come together. So this is why this is, this uh, gatherings are so important. We need really to ask for the strength, guidance, and also listening to Mother Earth, to the deities and to the spirits to guide us so we can honor our ancestors. What are we going to deliver? What kind of children we are going to deliver to this world? Not just what future we are delivering to the, to the next generations. When we talk about inter, intergenerational equity, but what kind of equity, earth equity, earth ethics we want to deliver? So this is what I'm putting here, how we can organize these concerts. We have organized the Eagle and the Condor Concert already with seven members for the continent. How we can call six more from every continent and lately 52 from all over the world. I'm going to leave it like that, but this is a beautiful moment. This is a beautiful time and space, very challenging. It's calling upon action. No just blah, 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 blah. Actions. Thank you so much. Thank you. 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 Uh, we pray that the rest of the world listens to uh, what these elders have to say that are so important right now, more critical now than ever in human history. Um, you know, when he talks about uh, Mother Earth and listening to Mother Earth, it's more than just uh, a, a saying. Uh, it's more than just a feeling. It's more than just something you believe in. You know that we must listen to Mother Earth. So, for example, uh, in Alaska, uh, we used to have abundance of everything. Uh, one of the elders, Paul John, who's no longer with us, said, you know, we can predict when salmon are going to be low or large in numbers with 100% accuracy a year before, because they listen to the, the wind, the cl uh, climate, the temperature, the, the waves, the, the, the plants that grow next to the rivers. Uh, they listen to all these things. And uh, he said, you think that king salmon are big today? When I was a boy, the king salmon average weight was 150 pounds. Now we think 60 is uh, a lot. Another elder said, 
You know, you think that uh, there's a lot of caribou in Alaska? Well, when I was a kid, it was a, they crossed the Yukon River uh, a mile wide and and uh, 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 and and went for three days. Uh, and now you think you know uh, a few thousand that come across the river and go in a matter of hours is a lot. And that uh, he said, well, ever since Western science came into Alaska, everything has gone bad. And indeed it has. Uh, this is another reason I feel that we need to listen to uh, <laughs> the first peoples of the world. Uh, one last thing, Mandahi talks about uh, what happens in South America. We have uh, uh, an understanding that Turtle Island, the hind legs of Turtle Island is Florida and California, and the tail is Central America, and tied to the tail is South America. And uh, the, the Turtle Island is, was, what is the Western Hemisphere. And that uh, the people of the South are what, what they want is for people of the North to change their dream because it's imbalanced and it's all mind. And the North is mental uh, and the South is the heart. We need both in order to function as human beings. So we have uh, Selena Manga that uh, would like to say some words. Selena, are you there? Yes, Selena, go ahead. Thank you so much. <laughs> Nyo kakai Selena Suti, nyo kakan kike os komanta kani Peru kani acacaya pukonti kibira kocher. My name is Selin Manga. I am coming from a community in Cusco, Peru, South America. What we call uh, Abia Yala, more correctly, and I says. To my Pachachai, Apocontiki, Wiracocha, give us the wisdom to resist, to keep us resilient to these times. I am a, a medical doctor, but since I was five years old, I am a healer, formed by my grandmother, Imperatriz and Victoria. And I became a doctor in a medicine school. Now I am in Harvard, in a, I make a scholarship. And I want to raise the fact that the uh, colonialists of the power, or the imperialists of the power, the colonial shapes that the power is imposed in our countries uh, are causing so much devastation through this season. Now we are facing the fact that not just our communities are disappearing, but the fact that our communities are very sick. The tuberculosis is killing uh, mostly the most vulnerable people, which are uh, indigenous girls. And uh, as the brother says, is the uh, destruction of the environment has uh, has uh, a philosophy behind, and that, that philosophy behind is the colonial ways. So uh, even if uh, our own countries has achieved good levels of health, like Peru has uh, achieved good, good, good levels of uh, infant mortality, but the indigenous people, if you compare with the average in the country, the indigenous children are still dying before they reach the age of one year. And the tuberculosis is basically attached to the indigenous people. And this is my specialty, what I do study is tuberculosis. And I want to raise this, uh, the fact of the 
colonial ways is still very alive and uh, how the colonialism uh, uh, disregard the knowledge and the and the knowing of the indigenous people and uh, i will raise this uh, question in this very important forum and thank you to my sister amy Khrushchev, who invited me here for make this possible to raise my voice for my people who is not here in Boston, he is not here in United States to raise their voice and say, we are, we are dying because the ambitious, because the, the way is called the colonial extraction is still very alive. How much time we can be resilient? How much years we are resisting? <laughs> how much years we are going to survive and make our knowledge and our knowing ways to cure ourselves will survive. Um, uh, the phenomena of certain people like me, mestizos, who go to the university, but we keep very ancient knowledge, we are disappearing. So if I don't teach this to my children, all the knowledge that comes to me through my grandmothers will disappear definitely. And like this, the disregard of the Western culture, of our knowing and our knowledge, are not just uh, bringing us death and disease, but more the disappearance of our ways to know how to cure certain diseases and how to prevent and how to survive as we may. So, but at the same time, my grandmothers teach me that uh, the self decolonization times are coming. So I start with myself, identifying what was promised, but in Kari, in Kari says, I will return, I will be millions. And I can see in this important forum with all of you, I feel like we are millions again, like in Carib has promised. I will come back and I will be millions, millions of self decolonizing people, like we are doing in this very nice moment uh, here. And I will raise the voice that there are many diseases, not just tropical infectious diseases, by chronic non-communicable diseases are killing my, my people. And I want to raise this voice uh, because the appetite for the extractivist activities of the Western culture are bringing so much diseases. We can no, we cannot fight anymore with this. We need certain time of, of help uh, to avoid they disappeared. So I came here to United States to raise this voice for the people who has not this voice, who has is not here. And I do understand the international cooperation is not helping us. It's using the, the same extractivist colonial ways to explode our resources, also our culture. And in my case, the knowing and the knowledge how to combat with diseases that are killing our people. We used to know how to keep our people very healthy and to prevent the spread of diseases. But now we are losing all this knowledge um, be, because we don't have the opportunity to do schools, how to teach this knowing and knowledge uh, we receive it from our ancestors. So I feel very honored to be in this forum, in this symposium, in this momentum. Thank you so much for listening to me. I am very grateful. Thank you, Selena. Uh, uh, I'm hoping that in the future we can have more forums like this where we bring more 
uh, people from from your country and this country together uh, to see how the North can change its dream. Um, and so um, I, I think that we've been here for an hour and a half. Let's take a 10 minute break if there's no objection. Okay, 10 minute break. I might be uh, heading out here, so see you guys. That? This is Dan and Ampkin. I'm on, on the road, oh, so just oh, saying. Oh, bad. Uh, so miss. maybe we'll hear from Dan before he leaves, and then we can take the break. Yep. Dan, do you want to say something before we break? Sure. Um, uh, I'm here in Washington State. Is is The name I'm known is Kaoplasinumkla Thunder and Lightning. Those of you uh, who might be familiar familiar or those who may not, uh, I'm from the Colville Confederated Tribes. Also, I'm from the Nez Perce, the Chief Joseph Wallawa Nez Perce. And I just got out of a conference with elders to have a working with plants and uh, plant medicines. And now I'm on my way to a ceremony. We had a really tragic event happen here on my reservation where life was lost. And uh, yeah, there's a lot of uh, things to to uh, behold uh, for the education and healing of our people and the deep rooted connections to you know what holds us together, which is our Mother Earth, everything that's sacred, such as our culture, our ceremonies, our connection to the Earth, or what we call Tamkula, Mother Earth our water, our seawood, all the things that you probably already heard people talking and the instructions. And those are the things that have a lot of value that uh, uh, maybe the modern uh, way that we are educated in schools, colleges, TV, and so forth, people don't really have a clear understanding of, of what we're talking about. So I'm gonna say thank you to all of our friends, you know, um, who are non-indigenous who are joining us today. I travel across the nation, across Turtle Island, and and I, I speak to colleges, kids, communities, and, and I try to find the way, uh, the answer, um, and to inspire that amongst all people that there's the key of this land is within our stories, within how we conduct ourselves and take care of the earth. We take care of one another. A lot of times our knowledge is passed by. They, don't, they think that's something long, from long ago, or they think it has no importance of today. I just got out of this workshop with, uh, our, you know, elders and just amazing the intricacies, the knowledge that our people had from long ago, you know, before there were computers, before arithmetic, you know, that there's sacred numbers, even in the artwork that we do, such as the basketry. And how would our people have learned these skills and craft and art? It's contained within our plant knowledge. It's contained within our songs, our ceremonies, the beautiful balance and harmony. And it's how to articulate this. Because one of the things that I notice is we talk, we talk, we talk. Sometimes people listen, but sometimes that's far as it goes. I think I heard my brother speak earlier who said, it's time for action. Our elders here say this is the last chance. This is the last chance. These elders that are here, these are the last of the last that have these teachings and sacred knowledge and remembrance of those who lived freely. So 
to our relatives out there, I always implore you to support the indigenous people, the educators, the wisdom keepers, the gatherings. So thank you for being with us today. Thank you to the Global Earth Repair Conference for allowing this caucus to happen. And thank you, brother, for taking the time, you know, out of your life, to, as well as each one who has been here. I haven't got to hear all the speakers. I'm just chiming in really quick, and I got to go to a ceremony here. My website is www.nanamkin.com. My last name is N-A-N-A-M-K-I-N. I'll do it one more time. N-A-N-A-M-K-I-N.com. And I just want to work with people and continue our message. And uh, we have to look at what we can do to create a bigger um, uh, stage, I guess, if you will, a louder voice for the indigenous people. So thank you, Skeeter, for allowing making this caucus to happen. And for every opportunity for gatherings, education, there's much changes that needs to be um, completed within the educational systems, within the media systems and how we're portrayed and heard and understood. So we have to begin to think of things, not just to listen and feel good about that we did something, but we have to be courageous and brave and fearless together as relatives, you and I from all directions and all colors, all nations, and find that way to create these bridges. So thank you for being humble and listening, taking this time out of your life to listen. And I'm going to end right there because I know you're ready for a break. I thank you for allowing me this time to share these few words. And I'm going to continue to uh, uplift each and every one of you in my prayers today as we go into the ceremony here very shortly. Have a good day, my relatives. Lem Lem, white peace not sweet pit. In our language, that means we are one family. We are all related. And that also includes all life. So the balance we are talking about is that connection. Thank you. Have a good day. Thank you very much, Dan. Uh, uh, those words are, are very important. Uh, we need to take action now, but to action that is generated by the heart. And we do need the allies who are people who are willing to spend the time to hear what we have to say. Um, and so um, uh, good luck and, and best wishes and prayers for your work. And I just want to add that we've put your um, website on the chat box so people can connect. And if anyone else has to go, you can just put your email if you want. And we'll get back to you with Dan's email, with our elders um, video and website, um, with other information that may be harvested through this um, caucus. And as Dan said, thank you all for being here. All okay. So with, with that, uh, we'll take a 10-minute break. And come back together again. I'm hoping that everybody comes back together again. Yeah, I'm going to keep this space open and um, you can put your email if you want. We'll deal with it later. Do we leave the recording on or cut it off? What, what do we do? You're out? Well, it's a, it's a bio break. If you want to have coffee or, or you know, breathe a little bit, go to the bathroom. Um, and no, I said, do I leave the recording get, over? Get back here. Um, if you want, I can I can email you the link again, and then you can disconnect if you need to do some stuff on the computer and come back. No, I don't. I just wanted to hear from you what I should do with. It. I can leave it. Okay. All right. Yeah. Sure. Thank you. Bye. I'm so happy you're here. Yeah. I'm hugging you. Right. Yeah, Sorry, thanks. I believe the recording can be paused. If there may be a pause yeah. button. You know, um, I've been in many, 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 many meetings headed up by white men, you know, and they never take a break. They might, they'll go a whole half day and not take a break. 
and I thought they had iron bladders. <laughs> Uh, hopefully we'll take a break every hour and a half and, until we're finished. Um, I wanted to show you, uh, uh, you know, this is the Eagle Wing fan given to me by Rita Blumenstein. And it, and it was a woman who gave this to me. And you'll notice how uh, feminine this is. Now, the other one given to me by the Coach of Medicine Man is very angular and very masculine. And so it's a reminder that uh, masculine and feminine have to come together again. The elders say that uh, we had a pendulum swing back and forth since the beginning of time uh, between masculine imbalance and feminine imbalance. And now we're in the masculine imbalance, and that has existed between, we estimate, between four to 6,000 years. Um, and it's still here with us today, which is why we're dealing with the kind of issues we're dealing with today. And uh, what Mendahi said, um, uh, you know, was um, that uh, we used to have the feminine and that the feminine helped to create the constitution, uh, but uh, they, the constitution makers extracted the feminine side uh, that was given by the Haudenosaunee. And uh, the, the Haudenosaunee uh, have the uh, matriarchal system where the female, the woman, would uh, sit quietly behind, but guide the men who did their work. And, and that was extracted from the US Constitution. And um, my people, uh, we have a story about how, um, you know, the, we call it the womb at the center of the universe, a place of creation and creativity and that identical field of energy is in every woman that is alive today. And uh, that we would do well to listen to that. Uh, and, to, and when women to get together in sisterhood, they can heal themselves and then extend the, uh, from their womb the energy in sisterhood outside of themselves so something new can be created. Nothing, until this happens, nothing new is going to be created. The state of the art thinking, state of the art technologies, they're all the old regurgitated as the new. So just one example of this, uh, the US converted to, uh, 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 to hybrid fuels to eliminate or minimize the amount of uh, emissions that go into the air. Well, uh, when that happened, everybody thought it was a great idea. But what happened was many of the world's farmers choose to uh, move from food crops to fuel crops. And that increased the cost of food and starvation around the world. That's just one example. We have several other uh, people who want to say something. So uh, I will uh, call on Chiyokten. Uh, are you there? Uh, yes, I am. I would like uh, to hand it over to Shai. Uh, her name was spoken before me, if that's OK. And then I could speak afterward. OK, yep, Shai. Yeah. Thank you, Chiyokden. <laughs> um, hi, everybody. It's nice to see all of you. It looks like there's a lot of people here from around the world, from diverse backgrounds, some indigenous people here as well. It's so beautiful. Really glad to see all of you. If possible, I would like to ask respectfully, whoever is able to, if you could turn your camera on, I'd like to see your face. I'd like to see your eyes and connect in spirit. Um, this uh, technology is very difficult for me, uh, but when, when we could at least try to see each other's faces, you know, bring your face close too, so I could see your face. <laughs> uh, 
Um, let's do um, a little... people who people who are afraid of being recorded. So uh, I still have Shay on spotlight, so you won't be seen in the recording. So you can put your camera on, and uh, everyone who wants to see everybody, just go to gallery view. If you hover with your uh, mouse, then you have a view option at the corner of everything, and you can choose gallery view. For the recording, we're going to have um, Shai on spotlight, and then it just shows her. Thank you. Please proceed. And sorry for interrupting. Yeah, thank you to those of you who are able to show your faces. To those of you who can't, that's totally okay, and I understand. I often also don't show my face on screen, but this seems important, so I will. Uh, let's do, I want to invite you to do a little activity with me before I say some words or share some brief words. If we could all um, close your eyes, actually find a comfortable seated position, sit upright, stand tall like a mountain or sit tall like a mountain. Sense your body. Um, I want you to close your eyes and place your hand on your belly. I want to invite you to feel your breath. Without trying to alter the breath, just feel it. Be with your breath. I want to invite you to take three conscious breaths with your full awareness of the breath. Now I want to invite you to take Three fingers, you have three, three middle fingers, put them on the middle of your chest on your sternum, right here between, uh, between the breasts, right next to the heart. And keep your eyes closed. See if you can feel your heart beat. See if you can sense your heart slow down as you breathe into it as you bring your awareness to it. May we all feel the sacred that exists in our hearts. It's always with us, connected to the breath, connected to our inner spirits and our fundamental nature, our true being. We so often, and I'll begin speaking now, it was just a little short way to get us grounded and in our bodies a little bit more. Um, part of my work is trying to help us get more embodied, more in the present moment, to really be in our spirits, to be in our hearts. I heard a couple people earlier, Kuyuk, uh, I think that's how I say your name, uh, and Ia Tahira, I heard them speak of the heart. And I wanted to speak to that just for a moment. To me, speaking of the heart is one thing. And using your words to talk about the heart and acting from the heart is one thing. But actually feeling your heart and living in your heart and breathing in your heart is a whole nother thing. It's my understanding that when we are truly in our hearts, when we truly can feel our breath, when we are truly embodied, we can act on this place and act with true spiritual integrity for the service of all beings and all creatures on this planet. It's also my understanding that when we truly understand the mechanisms of the heart, and when you truly know how your heart works, you have infinite wisdom accessible within yourself. And your heart, it can tell you 
what to do with your lives. It can tell you what your duties are, what your responsibilities are, how we should be in this world for our family members, for our friends, for our communities, for the earth, and for not all non-human individuals on the planet. Non-human individuals, meaning what people call animals, are non-human individuals, other beings, sacred beings on this earth who walk this earth with us as our brothers, sisters, and family. It's clear to me that um, the chaos we see in the world, the disturbances we see in the world are actually a reflection of our own spirits collectively. Every single one of us, every single person, we're participants in this collective network and we all have a role in it. When we see pollution and see disturbances in this world, it is a manifestation of what's in our hearts, what's in our minds. And when we collectively find true contentment and peace within our hearts, contentment within our minds and in our spirits, that radiates across the universe. It radiates across the earth and across the planet to all creatures, to the lands and the skies and the waters. So I, I invite you, I invited you to connect with your heart because we so often neglect our hearts. We so often forget to breathe when the breath is what keeps us alive. And it's magical and powerful and always here with us. And when we connect with our hearts and connect with our breath, we're connecting with the heart and the breath of all creatures around us. We're connecting with the heart and the breath of all beings around us, all communities around us, regardless of our race, regardless of our nation, regardless of the distance between us, regardless of our economic statuses, our political views, our religious affiliations. We are going beyond that and penetrating into our true natures, our interconnected natures as one. I believe that to truly impact this world, we have to come into ourselves. We have to know who we are in our fundamental natures. We have to know who our, what our heart is, what our heart is speaking on a really deep level. We have to know our minds and sense the light that can come through us. When you sense the light and when you come back into this part of yourself, it will reach everything. I really believe this. It reaches everything. It'll reach the politicians. It will reach um, these organizations and companies and industries that most of us probably oppose. It will reach them. So we have to keep coming back, keep coming back to your heart, keep coming back to your breath, keep coming back to your spirits. And I believe this is how we connect to the lands and waters, to all creatures. And this is how we can reach those who we want to reach. It's by coming back, coming back, coming back, back to your breath, back to your heart, back to your spirit. The imbalance we're seeing is, is within. This imbalance that's outside is also within. When we see this overconsumption of the lands, it's an imbalance within. It's when we don't have a clear understanding of our attachments and where we can give more than we take. Give more than we take. The way humans have been up until this point, up, well, recently, post-industrialization and on, even before industrialization, I believe this was happening, is overconsumption of the resources on the planet. And uh, this is a deeply spiritual matter. Um, we have to address the root of greed within ourselves and within our communities. And when we don't do that, it manifests as um, buying tons of things on Amazon or getting new televisions and new cell phones and uh, even going further to eating animals, eating other non-human individuals when we don't need to. I wanted to speak to this 
This is one very important issue, if not one of the most important issues on our planet today regarding environmentalism and regarding the uh, destruction of this earth for humanity and all creatures on the planet is the overconsumption of non-human individuals. Non-human individuals include cows, chickens, pigs, fish, and their products, including milk and eggs. I'm specifically speaking to factory farming and industrial fishing. If we keep up with supporting these industries and eating animal products to the degree that we are, we will not have a future for, for humanity and for the future generations. It's expected that by 2048 or sooner, likely sooner, there will be no fish in the ocean. No fish in the ocean by 2048 because of overfishing. Actually, I think it might be no sea life. I can't remember exactly, but there are other creatures, not just fish that are being overfished. Sea turtles, all sorts of creatures. Can you imagine a world and a world where there are no fish in our oceans? That'll be the collapse for humanity. Uh, I agree with you, Yuch, Ku Yuch, that uh, the earth will continue. There is a question of whether the earth will continue with or without humanity, with or without my daughter, who is a two-year-old, with or without the children of the future. <clears throat> so not only is there an issue of overfishing, there's an issue of um, non-human animal agriculture used as food products on this world. This is any, all across the world. This is in Europe, Australia, New Zealand, the United States, what's called the United States, South America. Um, these um, non-human agricultural industries, these food industries, quote unquote, food industries make up, if we stop supporting these industries, if we stopped eating cows, chickens, pigs, and their products, we would save land the size of Africa. That's how much land is being used to eat animals and their products. I speak to this issue. I am indigenous. My ancestors are Tlingit, Haida, Shihik, and I'm also part Japanese. I am indigenous and my ancestors did eat animals. I understand this firsthand. I was raised on animal products. I know how delicious they can be and how it's also connected to my roots. But we are in a world now where it is not sustainable. We're in, we in the present moment and the present moment demands change for all beings on the planet, for my daughter. It demands sacrifice, sacrifice of things that we're attached to, sacrifice to our desires, sacrifice of our unnecessary pleasures. If we really want to save the world for humanity and for other creatures, we have to give up certain things at this point. And the thing is, is not giving up very much because it's very easy to lead a plant-based vegan lifestyle. To eat plants is not hard. It's delicious. It's, it's totally wonderful. And you can be completely healthy and thrive just like the gorillas, just like the Spartans who are also vegetarian, just like... Um, uh, many of the leading athletes of today, you can be fully healthy and eat delicious food. <laughs> um, but, you know, these animal products, they also are some of the leading causes for all the major health issues on the planet, heart disease, cancer, and the list goes on. Vegan diet is the only diet to reverse the major health diseases of the planet today, which are especially affecting indigenous and people of color because we are most uh, sensitive to these unhealthy uh, products and are the major consumers of them. So we wanna make sure these healthy, vegan, plant-based foods are accessible to all populations, especially people of color, indigenous populations. I wanna say one last thing about the overconsumption of non-human individuals. So when, we, when we're talking about the heart, talking about the breath, 
we're not just connecting with our own hearts and breaths. We're connecting with the land. We're connecting with non-human individuals. And when we connect with non-human individuals, we can feel their pain and see their pain as our own. We can feel the earth and feel the pain of the earth as our own. So when we keep coming back to the heart, keep coming back to the breath, we can directly understand and perceive through the eyes of those we don't usually see through, those we don't usually understand and connect with on a heart level, on a spirit level. So if we keep doing that, I feel I really do believe in all of you. I really do believe you have the power to connect with all these beings and all this life, this rich, beautiful life on this planet. And to act accordingly to fulfill your spiritual duties. And to understand. To understand that we are all one spiritual family. So I want you to to say that in your mind, or you can say it out loud wherever you are. We are one spiritual family. We are one spiritual family. And when I say this, it encompasses all creatures and all beings of this planet. And when you sit with that in your heart, you'll know how to act and how to be with all things on this planet. We are one spiritual family. Gunachish Ixihan means thank you and I love you and sling it. Thank you, Shay. That was great and very true. Uh, uh, when you talk about things on the outside, you know, when the elders here say, when you point your finger outside, turn around and point it at yourself. Because nothing is created outside until it's created inside first. So we trash the environment on the outside because we're trashing the environment on the inside. We're, uh, we are critical of others on the outside because we're critical of ourselves first. Uh, and all of these kinds of things, it's a, uh, the outside is simply a reflection of what we have created inside. Um, and uh, I want to say that, you know, there are no more gurus singular gurus in the world. We today are all gurus. We have the answers inside ourselves. And that uh, uh, we all need each other during this time of great challenges to Mother Earth. And we have to heal ourselves and connect with each other so that we can collectively do something that is meaningful in the world until we collectively regain our personal power now uh, there is you know it's not going to change uh, and so part of what indigenous people understand is that personal power is something that we we don't use because when we grow up uh, uh, as a child, your parents will tell you what to do, how to do it, and define everything. And uh, uh, this, is, then you go to kindergarten on to postdoctor degree, and you're supposed to listen to the authority. Give away your personal authority so that you can talk, to, you can listen to the authority. Well, I'm telling you now, we're all authorities. Aho, the maker, uh, has put us here now for a purpose. And the only way that we have, uh, the, the elders are saying, you know, we all have a gift to give to the world right now. And the only way to access this gift is to go to your heart and see what your heart is telling you to do. Okay. Um, thank you, Shia. Uh, I just want to say um, technically that we're going to um, go to gallery view again for the recording. So um, if anyone feels uncomfortable, you can um, um, close your camera 
And also, since I'm not the one recording, I can't guarantee that we can see you before. So if there's a problem, please write directly to me um, on the chat box and we'll make sure to edit you out. Okay. And now, um, Chiyokten, right? Osiem, Nishila Cha, Nishila Cha, Siem, Genuate Quinchquilla Quinsatia. Squachel, CM Nestella, Cha Chiokden, Sinna Snat, Chalets and Atlusanich, Aethla, or CM, um, East Sentachel Swahela, CM Nestella, Cha. I am Chiokden from Husanich Nation here on our motherland, here uh, where our people were born uh, from the sky, came from the sky here. And um, it's really good to be here. I'm so thankful for all the words given. I raise my hands in gratitude to our ancestors, each and every one of our ancestors that brought us here today and the creator and uh, all of that inspiration that has uh, given us that strength to show up for the children, for Mother Earth, for each and every people of Mother Earth, the plant, animal, human, and water, and all of those sacred beings the creator put here. Um, I just wanted to uh, uh, acknowledge uh, our elders and our ancestors and, and the sacrifices that they've made so that these words that have been given during these times could be brought out because our people did uh, die for the wisdoms that we carry today. I can say that uh, in truth because uh, my four uncles who uh, should uh, be speaking right now are not here because they were kidnapped and abused to death in those uh, residential schools. So um, uh, I want to acknowledge our elders and our matriarchs for all that medicine first. Um, I want to thank all the matriarchs, especially for their words. Uh, we are people who have always uh, listened to our elders. We're elder society people. And with elder society people, uh, we uh, have been trained for millennia to, uh, for one, uh, not uh, be raised by the parent, but by the elders. So the elders are the bank of wisdom, and they, they raise the children and not the parents. And, uh, and uh, raise your hands if you think that's a really amazing idea, that the, that the elders who, who are that beautiful bank of wisdom, of Mother Earth, the circle life, and the creator, would now raise the children, and that has happened on Turtle Island and globally, indigenously, for millennia. And and we are no longer in that place of education from an indigenous stance, an indigenous way. It has been taken away from most all people. And uh, for me, understanding that's how we became indigenous. That's how we became keepers of sacred promises to hold a sacred relationship with every people that the creator ever put here, rather every family of every being or people that the creator ever put on our our sacred mother earth, that those are the ways that, that we understood our ability to be in good relationship with them. Our knowing that we are unseparated from each and every one of those beings, literally unseparated as indigenous people, and all of us are that way. Each and every person on Mother Earth are that way because we're all part of Mother Earth, right? Uh, and we're all born of Mother Earth. Uh, raise your hands if you ever met somebody who wasn't from Mother Earth. Let me see all the hands out there. Some people have met people who are not from Earth, I understand. <laughs> but, you know, most of the people who look like us are, have, are, we have red blood. If you cut yourself, your, your blood's red and you're from Mother Earth. And uh, that means that, that, that you know, we're, we're family. We're all family. And, uh, and so with that, we, we understand uh, that those ways of educating are, are very important. Uh, I just wanted to think about the ways that we've educated as Indigenous people, because I believe it's a, it's a uh, education system that has never been met uh, 
at the highest degree in settler colonialism. I went to one of the best funded schools in all of what they call the United States of America. And they never spoke once about Hachusida, the intellect of your heart, a word that my late auntie gave me and said, this is one of the most important words of our people. Hachusida, you can say that if you want. Hachusida, put your hand on your hutch, your heart, say Hachusida. Sounds like you're sneezing, hey? <laughs> Hachusida. <laughs> and uh, I, I say that so that we remember how to how to say that word and, and we would all have different words that would mean something like that and uh so saying our our entire being has an intellectual quality which science now just caught up to they they only now just caught up to that they're they're barely catching up to all the things that we learned from the medicine plants that we learned from elders raising children for millennia from the first breath and uh so I want to think about those things and I want us to meditate on that and how, how we could return to a, a elder society way because we are elder society people. And sadly, I say this with no disrespect, settler colonial world, which has taken over the whole world, is adolescent society people. They came here to these lands, of what they call Canada, what they call the United States without elders, without matriarchs. They burned millions. There's estimated millions of women burned at the stake because they love Mother Earth and the teachings of Mother Earth. And they put their hands into Mother Earth and worked with medicine plants and became strong and wise. And white male patriarchy could not stand that. And they destroyed most of those people. And uh, we need to exit that era uh, we've all had colonialism pushed into our bodies, into our minds, into our spirits, into the sacred places in our, our being that, that we didn't have those things. We had the teachings represented by the elders so many times, over and over and over again, elders standing up and speaking the words that were learned from millennia ago and, and given to the children for so long that, that our bones, they would, they would put them in our bones. The teachings were so deep, they were put into our bones and, and filling this sacred place, Hachusida. And uh, I, I know that's true. Um, and, and we need to return to that state. I truly believe if we're gonna heal Mother Earth, we need to re-indigenize ourselves. We need to take a look at our indigenous root and ask ourselves, is that root flourishing? Is it well? Is it growing? Do we have all the things that would allow that root to, to become who we are? And so we could be walking embodiments of the teachings of Mother Earth, the circle life, and the Creator. And our Hachusada would be full of those teachings. Because one of my elders said, he said, the good teachings that you would put in your Hachusada through the elders raising children for millennia, those you have to work for, those are difficult to achieve and acquire. First, you have to have elders, which are nearly extinct today the ones from the original culture, from very first from the culture. Colonialism has nearly taken care of those, those banks of wisdom, nearly wiped them out. And, and he said, uh, so that's a lot of work. For the opposite of those good teachings, you don't have to do anything. Don't do anything. Just leave this empty. Leave the sacred place in your being empty and those teachings of the opposite of the good teachings of mother earth circle life and the creator will just move right on in we'll just move in and guess who now is your governor the opposite of wellness the opposite of love the opposite of all things of creator and to prove that point you know my brother died of drugs and alcohol a year and, and three quarters ago and I rarely got to speak to my brother. 
I spoke to drugs and alcohol. Rarely could I speak to my brother. And so I know that the things that move in here and mask a human spirit, such as a, a politician who refuses to move his hand to write a future for his own child or his grandchild, or to move his lips that would give a future to them, a bright, livable future on Mother Earth. They simply cannot do it because the human spirit has been pushed down. Greed dominates control and racism is, is now living here. And the human spirit no longer has that voice. So I believe to return to a whole state of wellness on Mother Earth, we need to return to a whole state of wellness within ourselves, re-indigenize ourselves sit with ancient teachings of Mother Earth and the circle life. Each and every child should have that opportunity, which they do not today. The children simply do not have access to those things. Many of our children now don't. And that's the hardest thing in the world for me to understand and see. Many of our indigenous children do not have access to ancient wisdom and knowledge the way that we did. And so my prayer is that that the, that education system can return to settler colonial education. And we can say, you know what matters? Sure, up here our brain can memorize all kinds of things. We all hold enormous amounts of intelligence there. But what about the wisdom intelligence, the Mother Earth intelligence? What about all these things? Is that a subject matter inside of those schools? No, not at all. And we need to return those things. Wisdom should be curriculum. Indigeneity, re-indigenizing should be curriculum so that we can return to that state. Everyone, all families, all beings. And um, we're all related, right? We're all related. So I, I, I really pray that settler colonial world can, can let go of its arrogance, its, its dominance. It's abusive system, it's racism. The fact that they, they've never listened to us only till today, only till today have they ever listened to the word of indigenous people. And that's a lot of racism. I don't say that to, to be harmful. I just say it because it, it has been a truth, but that's being healed. It is being healed right now. And that's beautiful. And I love that, but we need to do more and move that along. And uh, the other things that we need to work on is how we govern. Our governance systems are of elders and matriarchs, particularly matriarchs. And David Suzuki, one of the brilliant scientists, I'll quote him first, of the illegitimate province of British Columbia, because this province that they say they have here where my tribe is, is truly illegitimate. Not one tribe has. Uh, mark the treaty, and the ones that have, we mark the treaty only for peace. And we have proclaimed we're unseated, unsurrendered, because we warred to save our ancient forest. Our tribe did. And I'm proud of our people. That's out of love. So David Suzuki uh, said, until we adopt the governance systems of the, he said, First Nations, but that's not true, because they call it the government here calls us First Nations, but many, of, because we're unseated and unsurrendered, that's a government label. Many of those uh, warriors and people say, no, I do not accept that word. But our elders said we were the first people, so I, I changed that. Until the, government, until the colonial governments adopt the governance systems of the first peoples here on these lands, he says, we will continue on this path of destruction till there's nothing left until we adopt that governance system. And he says, because, and he sat with our people a lot. He says, because not one of these bureaus, bureaucratic system in what they call United States and Canada, is one of them speaking to the other one about the direction of society. Not one. So it's a directionless society, adolescent society of these governance is. And yet he says, our people, have always had direction. That has always been given to us by the matriarchs. 
the life givers, the ones that would not allow one of the things that have happened, not one of them that has happened in it in the most disrespectful and destructive ways on these land to ever happen. And believe me, those numbers are real. 98% plus of our ancient forest annihilated in a heartbeat on these lands in our Salish Sea. 95% of natural animals annihilated from these lands in a heartbeat on these lands. 98% of indigenous human beings annihilated on these lands in our Salish Sea. We make up 0.056% of the human population of these lands. And if that is not the direction of colonialism, I don't know anything. I know nothing if that is not the direction of colonialism. We need to heal colonialism within ourselves and, and return to a matriarchal system that where we simply have the matriarchs at the point of every decision making. Return to that. Return to an education system that speaks of wisdom, of Mother Earth wisdom, and all of these things, and we can return to paradise. We can return to a place of paradise because our first peoples hold the roadmaps to paradise. Our indigenous peoples globally hold the roadmaps to paradise, and yet no one has ever hardly listened to us until just this moment. So um, I'll share a couple little teachings that my mom shared with me. My mom was born in the Chuck Aitlum in the smokehouse of our people with open fires, earth floors, cedar plank walls, and roof boards. And she sat with many elders. We were rich people at that time. Now we are poor. We're poor as nearly as poor as the settler colonial. Except we do hold on to some of these teachings, but those elders are no longer around us. They're no longer surrounding us everywhere, sharing the word in every moment for nine months of the year inside that house so that we could learn how to become a human being. We would know our place amongst all other beings. We'd know our human responsibility. Those things don't happen anymore. We're, we're fairly poor compared to that, but a heartbeat ago, we were pretty rich. And so I'll share with you this one quick thing. My mom, uh, in translation, she never spoke English and her mama never did. And uh, her mama would, share with her as a little girl and say, you always raise your hands to those trees in gratitude. And this is our sign language. If you can't speak our, our coastal sign language here, you can just raise your hands and you're speaking our language before you take up life, raise your hands, a plant, a leaf, give a word of sacred promise to hold a sacred relationship. I would only take part of your family to help my family see them like that before you take the leaf, before you take a life. And my mom said, uh, my grandmother said in translation, you always raise your hands to those trees. You know why? Because they breathe out what we breathe in. And I asked children, hey, what is that? Anyone have an idea? Oxygen. <laughs> and so they, they say, yeah, oxygen. Is that important? Yes, it's important. How important is it? Really important. How really important is it? It's really, really important. How really, really important. It's really, 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 really important. Okay. What is that? Life or death. So we receive a gift in every moment that's life or death from the beings around us. How many feel that's worth giving a little something back to? Just a little gratitude. And they, all the children raise their hands immediately. Children are so smart and so connected to the creator still. They get it without a moment of thought. And I tell them, I'll make a scenario for you. Imagine you have a friend. They give you uh, proteins that are good for Mother Earth. They give you leafy greens and roots and all these things that are so good and they're all wild crafted and they're so healthy. And they give you dark chocolate. It's fair traded, organic and not bitter. And they give you these wonderful things every day. But imagine you didn't thank them once. How long do you think that friend would continue to give you those gifts? And they all just say, not very long. And that is the ways of our people. That is the knowing of our people that if we disrespect that circle of life, they will feel disrespected and they will end their gifts towards us and we'll be empty 
without those gifts of life, literally of life. So it's wonderful getting those messages back from children. I will always thank nature. <laughs> it's so fun. But um, I'll leave you there with that last teaching of my mom. And, uh, and thank you for uh, giving the time. And uh, my prayer is, I believe we should all have a prayer for each other. We need to become one human family. One human family. Sitting Bull said, one finger is easily broken. But when you do this, you come together. We become unstoppable. We need to become unstoppable as one human family today. And, and with all the colors on our skin and the languages on our tongues and the cultures in our hearts, nobody's going to melt me into a pot. <laughs> so uh, come together as a human family and, and we'll heal ourselves and we'll heal Mother Earth, re-indigenize ourselves and we'll re-indigenize this world. OCM, Heiska, thank you for giving me that time. I thank you, Heiska. Thank you, Chiokden. Your words uh, contain lots of wisdom that hopefully people will take in. You know, he talks about how uh, we teach our children, and many traditions use this uh, like a drum. And uh, in the drum, at the base would be the child, then the adolescent, and then at the top are the adults, and at this side is, are the elders. And this is how I, the elders are the ones that teach the child because they're closer than the adults. Uh, this is just one lesson that Jilton talks about. And, and you know, um, about colonialism, uh, what he says is very true. We each are embodying the colonialism that, uh, that we suffer around the world. Not a single person is unaffected by that process. And that we need to recognize that this is what we need to heal within ourselves. Um, and I think about, uh, you know, environmentalism has been, you know, there were more, excuse me for a second, I'll close this, it's uh, getting too bright. Uh, it, in, uh, there are more environmental or organizations in the world today than there were 30 years ago. And yet we're coming to the end of life support system for humans. Why is that? Nobody asked. And uh, we need to question everything that we have been colonialism indoctrinated. Uh, you know, my, my childhood was raised in a way that I was never taught anything. Uh, uh, my, I watched, listened, learned, and, and uh, I, the, the adults would depend on each of us individually to learn what we learn without interference of an adult. And so the, the genius of that is that we're allowed to expand out to the maximum of our capability without an adult. And that may seem like anathema to now, today, but um, it was ingenious. And uh, the adult's job was simply to create the space for a child to learn, not tell them what to learn, how to learn, or to define anything. Now, uh, and because we are spirit beings in human form, that's what my mom told me and uh, that we are easily traumatized as spirit beings in human form. And we cry when a baby is born and celebrate when we die. And the reason for that, as spirit beings, we're free form. Then we take a human form and we're very heavy and we're going to experience the heavy experiences of human. But when we die, we go back to our free form. But, uh, thank you, Chiokton. Uh, 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 it was very good. 
Ulukoa, are you here? I think he wrote a while ago that he had to leave. Okay. Um, All right. And then um, Amara. Ben, are you around? You're muted. Ben Amara, may I record this or do you rather we don't have no, this no. recording? Uh, except for laughter, maybe. Uh, and they're very stiff. And our children are learning these ways from us adults that we need to express ourselves to release energy. And when we don't, my elder Rita Blumenstein said, it's like you uh, accumulate these emotions in yourself and it's like it becomes toxic. Eventually, you it will kill you. You must release positive and negative energies all the time. And in this society, it's not uh, 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 <laughs> acceptable for uh, to emote very much, except for laughter and anger, maybe. But, uh, you know, we need to, uh, you know, when, when, um, if a man cried in a business meeting, that's a no-no, right? Well, it's true that we are unsafe to emote anywhere we go. And that what we need to do, the elders are saying, is that we need to recognize that this is an emotion that's raising in you because of something that's happening. And you need to acknowledge to that emotion that, okay, I recognize your emotion. I'm going to deal with you. And then when you're in a safe place, you let it go. Uh, that's uh, another teaching of, of the elders. Yael, who do we have next? Pacha just came on. Let's have Pacha. Ah, Pacha. Welcome, Pacha. Pacha is from uh, Colombia. Can you introduce yourself? Pacha, we need you to unmute. Can you unmute and show yourself? Not showing up. Okay. Um, maybe we have some some tech stuff. I'll check with him on uh, the other channels. Um, I saw Melody. Is that Melody Talcott? Melody, do you want to share? Okay. Um, Quill, do you want to take? Uh, uh, bio break and then come back or do you want to have uh, people share with raising hands or how do you want to proceed? If there's any other indigenous or first peoples uh, um, that want to speak now, maybe we can do that and then take a break. Okay, so if we have um, Indigenous people that haven't shared yet, you can unmute yourself and please share with us. Okay, maybe not. Maybe this is a good time to take another 10-minute break. And hopefully by that time, Pacha is back on board. Okay? Okay, so uh, we'll come back. Um, at and at the 35 minutes of the hour, and then we'll go for another hour. Okay. Okay. We're leaving this space open, and uh, you can take a break and come back. Thank you for being with us.
still recording? Uh, he is the spokesperson for all the elders in Colombia. <clears throat> okay, well, he tries to get on. Is there anybody else, any uh, first persons, uh, first people that would like to talk? And while you're thinking about that, uh, uh, Mendahi asked if there would be a chance for uh, for us to hear what uh, other people who are attending this uh, would have to say about what they've heard so far. And I would like to reserve the last uh, 20 minutes or so for actions. Uh, we need the time for talk, uh, generally speaking, is done. We've got to act and we've got to act now. So um, hopefully we can get some actions that not only can be beneficial to earth repair, but for uh, the world. Okay. I guess Patrick. Um, there were some questions when, when some of the indigenous people were talking. So maybe we can do questions first before people give their insight because it will give a chance to maybe hear more from the indigenous people. Uh, you mean questions from generally? Yeah, there were, there were some questions in the chat box about some of the some of the prophecies and some of the things that that um, some of you mentioned. Okay. Yeah. Well, why don't we open it up uh, generally, and uh, then if any. First, first peoples uh, uh, want to talk. Uh, just uh, raise your hand or let Yael know. So with that, so maybe uh, everyone who wishes to speak can can do the hand raise. If you um, with your mouse, if you go down to reactions, then you have there the raised hand, and then Kuyah, you can name the people. You will see it. And the participants. I'll come show you. I, I can't see everyone. Okay, we're open up for questions. I have a question. Is now the yep. time to speak? Yes, Brendan. Hi, I love you and thank you so much. From the bottom of my heart, thank you. Really, really just blessed. Um, my question is, you know, how can I, um, my partner is um, part indigenous. She has a Blackfoot ancestry and Japanese and white and but she doesn't have any connection to those roots while i i as a, a white boy that was lucky enough to be brought into an open native circle since i was a little little kid and was taught by my mom to respectfully harvest grandmother willow and pray corn and tobacco into the foundations to do ceremony how um how can i bring this forward for my kids who are all these things and make them just feel human and part of this and uh, avoid coming off as being culturally appropriating or or uh, or uh, appearing to claim something that's not mine because obviously there's this great trauma. Thank you. Thank you, Brendan. Uh, before I respond, can any other elders or uh, first peoples you know, we're not, would like to answer that question? Okay. Well, if you do. You have uh, two. Okay. Both women. Okay. 
who's talking. Ia is Ia. raising her hand. Yeah. I see well, I had raised my hand for um, something else, but one of the things I found in, in children, are your children young children, adult children? Where are they in terms of age groups? And one of the things I, I learned is really exposing children and storytelling, encouraging children. Children are very creative. Encouraging them to do research, like just exposing them and I, asking them questions, allowing them to explore without preaching to them, without just any kind of judgment, but just encouraging them to seek and tell them story. Tell them about how you came to be involved in your interest in the Native people's culture. How did you come to be that? Tell them your story and encourage them to go deeper and research. That's how I learned to travel back to my stories from my great grandmother. Because a lot of times we don't know that we plant in the seed and that child will be guided by that seed that you plant in their life. We don't have to preach them if they will be led by through their curiosity. And that's what I, I have experienced with children, my children and children that I work with that come in contact with today. Allow them to ask questions and help them to explore those different ways of knowing about native peoples and other cultures. Thank you. Queer, you need to unmute. Oh, sorry. Catherine. Kia ora, thank you. Um, storytelling, I totally agree. So thank you. Is it Ia? I'm I think it's a capital I, sorry, I'm not sure, or L, <laughs> L-Y-A. There's an I. There's an I. Oh, sure, thank you. Um, um, I can only speak from my experience, eh, Brendan? Uh, in my community, we have many what we call tangata tiriti or Pākehā. Um, who we love and we marry and, you know, just like your experience, right? Um, the one piece of advice I can give from our life experience is if there is a true intention to learn in good faith and have an open mind, uh, we welcome, anyway, um, Pākehā and Tangata Tiriti to come on our, our marae our um, other communities have long houses or an ancestral houses, um, our, like hubs of our community. Um, come when we have events and things happening at our marae, um, help out in the kitchen. <laughs> Start just um, offering yourself for different mahi or work that needs doing in different spaces. And you'll naturally get to just talk to different people in those kinds of mahi. And over time, I guess it's like a natural process of osmosis and building relationships. We're big on relationships. Everything is relational. If there's no relationship there, uh, it, you have to start from ground zero. But there'll be some relationship. You'll, you know, people will get that you're there for a purpose. Uh, the right reason and they'll you know offer you things to do uh, like doing the dishes or sweeping or sitting in at some of our our gatherings where we discuss matters and um, over time you'll build up that relationship and it will be up to the elders of that community or different people who hold different knowledges in those communities to how they wish to progress that relationship with you. You're, you're looking for maybe, this is what I find a lot. People ask for a silver bullet. There isn't one. Mother nature is too diverse. Indigenous peoples communities are too diverse. 
Um, it's free, prior, and informed consent of every Indigenous community that you go to. They'll roll their own particular way. They'll rock their own particular way. And they will bring you in in their own particular way, and they will share knowledges in their own particular way and time. We have this saying, Māori have this saying here in Aotearoa. Thanks. Was it Who, who was it that said, could you pronounce Aotearoa? There you go, Aotearoa. <laughs> Land of the long white cloud, for those who um, want to know what that name means. Aotearoa. Um, yeah, so that's my advice. Um, find a community uh, if you can, if you're privileged enough to be able to do that, and just introduce yourself. Just be upfront about where you're at and what your intention is, and just let it naturally progress from there. Uh, I can also say the same thing actually happens within Indigenous communities. I have a uh, a friend from Yaki in um, Mexico, and she had to go back to an elder's home for to have their traditional, like we have cup of tea, cup of tea time. They have theirs, whatever. She would sit with the elder and drink this, I'm not sure what the drink was, equivalent of cup of tea, and just listen and spend time with him. And one day she went back there and the time was just right. Who knew? And he gave he gave out all, he started to give out all this information to her. But she had to build that relationship. And it's the same with me. On my marae, I had to sit day after day in, and we call them tangi, that's funerals, funeral services for our people who have passed over. They will come to our marae and I would have to sit next to my, my kaumatua, my elder, a female elder in this situation and observe when she got up, she would do the calling. We call it the karanga. She would welcome on the families of the deceased and their ancestors in their spirit form onto our marae, and she would call them in, and they would respond with a call. And I would have to just be there and observe and observe and observe. And one day she was like, okay, up you get. <laughs> so you've got to be prepared. But again, it's ma te wa. We have the saying ma te wa, all in its good time. Ma being clarity, knowledge, wa meaning time space, ma te wa. And honestly, only the creators really know when is the timing and they'll drop it with you. They'll drop it with you and you'll know. So you got to let go a bit. you got to trust a lot. and um, yeah, just ask for the, you know, the nice, juicy, protective um, energies of your ancestors. We all got ancestors, your ancestors, to help build that relationship, you know, quickly. And and you're off. You're on your way. Uh, P.S. The uh, internet these days is like a, a super storehouse library of great information, too. So there's there's all, always that track. But kanohi get to kanohi face-to-face. It's the best. The best way. Kia ora, that's a great question. Kia ora. Thank you, Catherine. Melanie? Melanie just walked away, I think. Okay. Maybe Chiyok then, because I see that he also has his camera on. Yeah, I want to uh, thank uh, Catherine for that uh, response. I believe I know what the question was, how you can get in touch with ancient wisdom and knowledge and indigeneity, you know, elder uh, word and all of those things that are not so much present in this world anymore. And, and those were beautiful answers. I really appreciated those. Hi, Ska, CM, and uh, thank you, Honorable One. Uh, yeah, I, I feel that those things that, that we can do, our ancestors, each and everybody's ancestors are from Mother Earth and and they're and if you go far enough back, they're indigenous and and they they held wisdom and they had matriarchs and they had elders and they listened to them and and uh, and we can commune with them, offer them some food like that in ceremony. We our people prepare food uh, with the intention of of sending it up in ceremony. Uh, with a burner who opens the fire to the other world and and that we're people who never abandon our ancestors and uh, our ancestors of those good uh, ways, I believe are waiting for us. And our ancestors here 
are wanting to help each and everybody who walks upon their bones on Mother Earth. And uh, why would we not want to help them? Why would they not want to see settler colonial world heal? Because if they do not, if we don't heal, if settler colonial uh, world does not heal, who, who have the reins right now, they have the steering wheel of the bus. And if they don't heal, guess who's all going over the precipice? So we need everyone to heal. And we're all together in this. We're in one canoe today. So our ancestors are there for us. And um, uh, like uh, Kuyu uh, said, I uh, apologize for pronouncing your name wrong. Uh, yeah, we're, we're really uh, uh, together in this world, you know, and uh, we're really have to take care of each other and things of that nature. So um, I think, uh, and then uh, again, uh, the internet's really good, but um, anytime Indigenous people offer something up, we have a tribal canoe journey here and we invite everybody to show up and our elders get on the floor and they sing the songs and they share the word, you know, so that we can rebuild our relationships amongst each other. We can rebuild the relationship of the child and the young hearing the elder speak and all of the things and uh and we truly did have those opportunities uh and and now those opportunities are opening up again and it, it is very beautiful to know that these doors are opening back up and these pathways to indigeneity are are opening back up and that's what we need we need everyone to be curious everyone to have a curious heart how can I place that ancient wisdom in my being and in the hearts of children? That's my belief. That, that, and that, that's the thing that makes me a little sad sometimes is that I, I wonder how people came here and never had curiosity of how we co-created paradise, how we never killed one ancient tree, yet we had all the materials we needed, things like that. We lived with salmon plugging the rivers, literally, and... Uh, and with high populations in our Salish Sea, you know, how did we do it? And they never asked us. They, they just wanted us out of the way. And uh, But those days are mostly behind us. And now, although the government still see us as a threat because 80% of biodiversity is, 85% uh, of global diversity is held by indigenous people. And they only make up 12% of the population globally. And uh, something like 40% of forested lands, uh, truly well forested lands, not cut down uh, crop lands, but real forests are, are protected by indigenous people. So um, as more and more people recognize their indigeneity and sit with these teachings, figure out how to access them. And as long as they're that tribe or that people are willing to offer up open teachings, we should open our hearts to receive them. And, and, and bring our children to sit with those teachings so that we can return to eldership, return to elder society people globally. Yeah, so it, it is the, the, uh, the big question, how do people access it? How do we get there? Thanking your ancestors that was spoken and, and, and rekindle the relationship with them, rekindle kindle a relationship with the ancestors under your feet because they will help you. They'll sit on your shoulder. They'll whisper into you or give you those good words of, of how to fill this place once again so that we're all walking embodiments of the teachings of Mother Earth, the circle life and creator. And uh, we, we can do that together and help each other that way. So, um, yeah, just a, a few uh, words on that reiterations. Osiem, Iska. Thank you, Jeff. And I see that Patra is now on, and we'll just stop the questioning first. And, and uh, Patra, welcome um, to, to the Earth Repair Conference and the uh, Indigenous First Peoples Caucus. So uh, we're looking at questions about what it is that Indigenous people and others need to do now. Patrick, can you unmute? Hi, hello. How to everyone? You can hear me? I can hear you. We can hear you. Hear me. Okay. So sorry if I don't speak a good English, but I try to do uh, 
more good for myself. Uh, in Paisani, to all of you, no can cani pacha canchaya na kuna marca manta cani yakta pi Colombia manta rimai pano kasurinchi pa ayukuna pa mi kuna. I speak in my native language to all of you to say I am Pacha Kanchai from Yanakuna people from Colombia. I am the speaker of the Council of Elders from the Great Council of the ONIC or Organization National Indigenous from Colombia. And we are speaking with the elders about that. What is the indigenous people need and what is the more important thing that we need to know about our elders and the, all the people are doing in the, in the lands, in the native and sacred lands. Our elders say uh, the only need, the only thing that we needed is to continue with the heritage, continue with the, all the things that our elders teach to us. And the people need to understanding. We are in a very historical moment in this mo in this right uh, time when the indigenous people are the guide, and we have the knowledge how to explain to the all the world where is the way to make connection first to our spirit, and now how do we how we can to do to make connection with our mother earth and our mother speak to us and our elders say in a lot of ceremonies that we have eh, the people outside can do anything more than open your eyes open your heart and listen to us but our voice is the voice of our Mother Earth. We need to make a great network with all the elders in a spiritual world to share all the knowledge that our Mother Earth are speaking to us, to heal, to make connection, to make a weaving, to a great ceremony, to heal all the sickness that this humanity doing all the time and they doesn't understand how our elders say the most important thing that we can to do is working with our culture we need to walk in the path of the spiritual way in all the lands we have elders and we need to go to meet with them, our grandmothers and our grandfathers. We need to sit with them. We need to take care because they are the speakers of the mother earth and they have all the real knowledge. How do we need to understand it? We can take care of our mother earth. And maybe the people think we need a lot of resources of the government of the development we need projects we need a lot of things that the other people can help to use but the real thing that we need to do is to take our own time to take our own moment to do the things that we need to do if you have the time to go inside to you lessen your heart lessen your spirit, unless in the voice of your ancestor inside of you, they guide to you to the great and the good path. And you can do in the things that we need to do because all the people have connection. The real thing is we don't have the time. And it's not the have the time. We need to have the discipline to go inside and do the things that we need to do. Our elders say, we drink ayahuasca, we drink peyote, we drink uh, a lot of plants, sacred plants, and we are doing our ceremonies, we are singing, we are dancing, we are sitting inside in front of the fire. And 
all the spirits speak all the time. And the people know that, but the people maybe feel fear. And that sickness, we need to heal. To, to write to this moment, I come in from Rome to a great council of a lot of people with the Sami people, people from Africa, people from Australia, not indigenous people from Hawaii, indigenous people around the world. We are in the World Food Forum. And in this and in this Food Forum, all the people are speaking, are speaking about why, why we need to do. The indigenous systems can help, can help and heal all the system, but the humanity need to open his eyes, his hearts, and heal, heal all the things that we are doing with the Mother Earth. And the elders say, the only thing that we need to do is to open us to listen to the elders, because in this moment, in this real moment, is the time to make a great ceremony for all, with all, with, with all the native people, with all the elders in a union to all the world. And maybe we all, I, I try to listen, so sorry because I have a bad connection, but I listen to all of you and is the same thing that my elders are speaking in this land is the same thing that the elders are speaking in the other lands and when you take these missions and we are sharing and sharing and sharing they are replicate and growing up and growing up and that energy travel in the spiritual world to all the hearts that all the people have. And right now, right now, I can uh, look to myself and I say that is a very truth. That is true. Because the real thing that we need to do is take the space, take the discipline and speak with all of us and make the, this, this great ceremony and doing all the real things that we need to do and that, no, we are knowing this important time. That is the reason that we are here, making these networks, making gatherings, making meetings for listening to us and sharing the wisdom of our elders. Here, we are speakers. Only that. Here, we are the voice of our elders, of our land, of our, of our ancestors. And the most important thing is all the people are here are searching. All the people are searching. And if you are a search, you can find. But the real thing is you need to search inside of you and find the real answers to inside of you, inside of your spirit. The only thing, Elder, about your question that we need to do is walking in the path of our knowledge and have the discipline to continue sharing and sharing. I walk into a lot of parts of the world and I listen to the people, please, Pacha, heal me. Please, Pacha, eh, call to me. And the only thing that I say, go inside to you and go to your roots. Listen to your ancestors and they help you. I am only a speaker, man, the voice of my elders. But I can show you and I can share with you the same love that my elders give to me, that my community, that my family give to me. So I'm still here. And I want to say to all of you, thank you. Because 
the spiritual knowledge, the spiritual words, is not only words, is the real, the real, the real doing, the real ceremony, the real action that we are doing. The real action that we are doing is sharing. Open our heart and make a wedding with our spirits to be in union with the great universe, with the great Mother Earth and our ancestors. Thanks to all these elders. Thanks to all of you. Thanks to all you grandmothers and great fathers because you are here for your, a lot of people exist for you. Your grandfathers, your grandmothers, and all the people back in you are existing. And we need to say thank you to all that, or to all that people. They was exist for us. And we are here because a lot of people exist in the past. And now we are here sharing and doing the same work. But now we have the conscience and the knowledge to take care of our mother earth. I say, yesterday we have a ayahuasca ceremony and the spirits say, is the time to say to all the people, make a great connection with the spirit and listen more the mountains, listen more the wind, Listen more the earth. Listen more the fire. If you have the time to make a fire, to call the spirit of the great sun, of the great fire, speak, and you have the answers inside of you to listen to that. And that is your own ceremony. They only say to... The only thing right now to say for me to all of you is listen the voice of your spirit inside of you. Listen, your ancestors are speaking all the time in the tree, in the wine, in the wind, in the water, in the sea. They are speaking all the time in a little symbols around of you. They are speaking in all the signals. They are speaking in all the time, but we need how to know understanding and how to know to read that sweet and very, very, very essential language that they have with us. Our spirits are talking all the moment, but we need to open the eyes of the heart, our spirit, to understanding and read that. And right now, I say thank you to all of you. Thank you because my mother earth gave me this privilege to live in this historical moment when I see all the humanity change to another conscience, to listen the elders, to listen the spirit, to listen the words of our Mother Earth. And thanks to all of you to listen the words, the life words of my elders. Thank you to all of you. Thank you, Pacha. You always uh, carry the words of the indigenous uh, First Peoples uh, nations in Colombia uh, with such impeccability. And by the way, your English is a lot better than my Spanish. <laughs> so uh, you're doing very well. Um, now, what he talks about, that we must do a grand ceremony, uh, most people don't understand in the Western world what that really is. And uh, our elders, uh, uh, you know, there came a time during the great masculine imbalance where they 
communicate with each other through the internet, not the internet. And they always communicated with each other in that way before the beginning of time. And we, we humans create time. Um, when you're at present in the moment, there is no time. And so um, given that the elders decided to, to that the before the great last imbalance to hide the sacred and secret teachings. And um, they hid it in an in ingenious way. They piecemealed it all over the world before the, the teachings were, uh, original teachings were uh, uh, one uh, uniform uh, amongst the different cultures made different only by the culture, the language and the vibration of the land. And, and so, um, uh, you, we, so elders have been communicating this way and they have been traveling for at least 30 years now. Um, and between different cultures all over the world, sharing their piece of the teaching. And what, what, they, what the original elders did was to uh, uh, say, okay, we'll agree in this part of the world to forget this part of the teachings. Uh, and they did this for two generations until there was nothing there about that original teaching part. And now the elders are getting together uh, all over the world, doing the work of bringing their part of the teachings together with the others in prayer that the original teachings will be made whole again. And um, with ceremony, uh, our elder Ed Sparks talked about the, the importance of ceremony and uh, what it means. And what he's taught, what he talked about was um, uh, uh, it's, it was transrational, but uh, quantum physics, he said, you know, is coming close to understanding what this means. And uh, what what they they did is that it's all about vibration. Everything in existence has a vibration. And in this world, in Mother Earth, we have been taken over by a negative vibration. And uh, uh, we can call it capitalism, colonialism, whatever it is. Uh, we've been taken over by that. And that what we need to do is align ourselves with the positive vibrations. We acknowledge that the negative vibrations are there, but do not act on that. We act only on the positive vibrations and that during this time, uh, the vibrations are done through ceremony. And these ceremonies bring up this kind of vibration uh, that is something that helps us focus on what, what we need to do with ourselves and that we have to um, understand this and use ceremony in that way to create the vibrations that are needed now. And um, the, you, you, can, you might not understand the transrational aspect of this, but you certainly can understand uh, quantum physics and, uh, and how quantum physics talks about how one part particle can affect another particle that are going in opposite directions and, then, and they would be identical. Um, and so that's just uh, one piece of it. Now, um, Pacha talks about, um, you know, that we must do it. We don't need anyone's commission and certainly uh, not governments. Um, I, I chaired uh, indigenous knowledge sessions for the uh, Global Summit on Climate Change. Uh, it was a UN function, but we did it on our own way. And what they concluded is that governments will not act fast enough. We must act. 
ourselves, individually and collectively, not look towards the authorities to, to help us because you think that climate change is too big for us or, or too big for any individual. But when we get together in our new tribal members around the world, we can make a difference. And when indigenous elders, uh, first people elders, as Pacha talks about, get together in a grand way, uh, uh, physically and spiritually, and have a singular intention where we embody it, not uh, not not think it, but embody it at the cellular level of our bodies, that this is our intention, but we need help. And what we look towards is the spirit world. And most people poo-poo it. They don't think it's real. Um, but um, I'll tell you one thing that the creator has given us, everything in existence, is the freedom to choose. And so the, the spirit world cannot act uh, on your behalf just by, uh, you know, you pray it. You have to ask them for help. This is a choice. And so the spirit, the, the universal law is choice. And they respect your sacred path in such a way that unless you ask, they do not interfere. And so it is very important to ask for help. Uh, and this, the answer comes when uh, you are in harmony with all in existence. When that asking is in harmony with all in existence, then the answer comes back very powerfully. Okay. Um, any other elders want to say anything before we go back to question and answer? We've got. Um, the, we have, you, you wanted to leave the last part for uh, possible actions. And yeah. it seems like the grand ceremony is something that, that quite a few um, indigenous elders and people are, are feeling into. And Melanie Goodchild wrote that. Um, Melanie, maybe you can say a few things about what you do and, and also the, the paper that you mentioned in the chat box that you were writing about the wisdom of the elders. Okay, sure, Miigwech, thank you. Yeah, so um, I was writing a, a paper about what I study, which is complexity and uh, systems thinking, and I sat with four Haudenosaunee elders Mohawk elders. I have a spiritually adopted Mohawk uncle. And I was sitting with two systems thinkers from MIT, Peter Sangi and, and uh, Otto Sharmer. And as I was writing two separate papers, I was reading about the Chura Wampum Belt, the original treaty between the Haudenosaunee Confederacy and, uh, and the newcomers. First the Dutch, the British and the French, um, the French and then the British. And in that Chura Wampum Belt is, you know, the, the two the two purple belts, if you've ever seen them, the two purple columns in the wampum belt. And we share the river of life together. And my uncle Dan Longboat says, you know, now the river herself is in jeopardy. So it behooves us to come together. And that, I see that's a com common teaching in uh, many of our prophecies of coming together. And so I wrote that paper in a two row visual code and I shared it there because it talks about there's stories in there from those elders that talk about uh, reconnecting um, to the earth. And what I'll, I'll share is uh, when I started doing that work, because I, I grew up um, and I had the opportunity to go to ceremony and, and to learn from our elders um, and go to our mama Dasso in our sweat lodge. And so I went into a lodge and asked uh, if I should be and and how should I be doing the work I was doing of, you know, you might call it decolonizing, but it's really re-indigenizing, particularly mm -hmm. because it was very cross-cultural. And our colleague um, mm -hmm. knows uh, Teokasen ghost horse. And uh, Teokasen refers to the, the newcomers of, of Turtle Island as baby Turtle Islanders. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you know, the trauma mm -hmm. that we experience um, after contact, but all the trauma that came here that we need healing. And I've heard um, Kuya talk about, you know, the most unselfish thing you can do right now is heal yourself. And so mm -hmm. when I came out of that, <laughs> um, 
I was instructed for my family to make this uh, Mikanak Shishiguan, this turtle rattle. And so the rattle is red on the left for the heart and white on the right for the mind. And there's 13 Mishomis, um, Manadug spirits that are inside 13 little stones for the 13 moons on the turtle's back. That's our traditional calendar and the 28 days. So we had 13 months, 13 moons. And that when you shake this rattle up and down, four times you're inviting in the ancestors and when you shake it side to side, that's healing. But that's also the Adzukan, the traditional um, sacred story of our creation of how Anishinaabeg, uh, our peoples came to be in Manitouaki. And the first sound the creator made, the first sound we heard was that rattle shaking. And so what this did though, was it, it taught me to always remember going between heart and mind. And I saw a discussion, Catherine and others earlier sharing in the chat about, you know, heart and mind. And I think for us, this, the, the, question of uh, systemic transformation, which is things like sustainability, decolonization, all of those ideas are uh, re-indigenizing, are about transforming systems with undesirable outcomes. And these are often human created systems. And so for us, the transformative change is often as the elders have shared with me and I'm sharing with you now is about restoring balance. And so that, that balance, when something's out of balance, you know, we're unwell. And so, so much of, of this work is about restoring balance and listening to the frequencies of Mother Earth, which are spiritual, mental, emotional, and physical. So that medicine wheel that uh, so many of our nations have, but these medicine wheel and this big as those four colors, those four directions, the spiritual, mental, physical, emotional. It's also like the drum teaching, the four phases of life, the four sacred medicines. This is a really you know, short little introduction, but, but these teachings of these four peoples coming together in these four directions, those beings that live in those four directions, was, uh, was prophesized. And, and I think those prophecies are, seem to be coming true from so many different nations. And so we live in a time of prophecy. And so if you're a baby turtle islander, um, healing, and we say uh, which is uh, returning to ourselves, you know, returning to ourselves before all the hurt and trauma to be our authentic self and to bring to what we do our minigojuin, which is our sacred knowledge bundle. Minigo, that which is given to you, is your win from somebody else, but from the creator, Gijin Manito, who put these people in your life. And so I'll just share with you, as my Uncle Dan says, when we come together like this and we light the council fire, we each take a piece of that ember with us. And so these kinds of gatherings, I'm really grateful to receive the invitation today to join you. I'm not a part of the conference, but uh, um, to have been invited here to be part of this caucus and listen to the elders and from all the other nations. So, thank you for listening. Thank you, Melanie, for sharing that. Um, we, we are getting close to ending. Um, uh, and so... As an African American elder, I'd like to speak. Go ahead, please. Thank you so much. It's an honor to be here and to be in this auspicious moment when truth is being spoken. We are the ones who have the answers. And it is our duty to shrink our pain bodies and ask for forgiveness for all of the atrocities so that people can come back into balance and the earth can be healed. I'm so grateful for the opportunity. I spoke yesterday, my talk was awakening to black love. In my mind, it's a tipping point concept because we've been demonized. We have demonized the color black and that those of us who are dark you get that negativity. And so I love the idea of coming together in ceremony with all of the elders, all of us doing our ceremonies because we are one. And when we look at Turtle Island, 
all of the pain that's been blown through the indigenous people and the people that were enslaved, it's still happening. And if we could come together and listen with the heart, not the mind, the mind has been colonized. We do need to redigenize our minds. I love that concept. <laughs> hmm. Say that even with all of the atrocities to my people that are still happening, I know that light and love and power and the wisdom to heal is part of ours. I met a Ugandan guru who said that all of the natural disasters is a, a human emotion unexpressed, that the hatred and the anger and the fear of being of this world has taken over, but we need to close our eyes and go inside and not be afraid of the dark. So I welcome you to close your eyes and breathe in love for blackness. For we get the stars because of the black skies, the soil that feeds us, Mother Earth, when you dig, she's black. Don't be afraid of the black. And please pray, please be together that we can heal the heart of humanity by healing our own hearts, asking for all the curses that have been placed through ceremony that separates us can be healed so that we can heal the wounds of racism and stop hurting our mother. So thank you. Thank you for those words, Matima. Uh, I, I think that we have heard a lot of wisdom from representatives from the different four different directions, the four different colors. And I I would like to see if there's any disagreement that we need a grand ceremony around the world uh, uh, to heal not only ourselves, but others, and to be in harmony with Mother Earth. Um, is, is there any one of the indigenous representatives uh, that would disagree with that proposition? Okay, now, the, in terms of the physical, let me tell you that at the last uh, uh, dawn of, of the, the earth, there were four, uh, according to our story, there were four different worlds that each got destroyed by humans uh, for survivability of human beings. And, and the ones that survived those were the first peoples. And uh, the last time that this happened, according to our stories, was uh, when the Great Ice Age was happening. And the, um, the, the, all of the people in Turtle Island, and they did a similar thing in uh, uh, on the, on the, West, uh, the Western Hemisphere or the Eastern Hemisphere, uh, all the people of Turtle Island came together in a Grand Turtle Island Council. And they were deliberating about these changes on Mother Earth uh, because everyone recognized it and trying to decide physically and as well as spiritually what they needed to do. And the physical thing that they decided was to seed, um, uh, give permission to the Inuit to share what they know with different cultures. And so they sent uh, messengers down to, because they understood how to survive in the cold. And they, uh, all cultures uh, memorialized these teachings in stone, in rock next to the great rivers of Turtle Island. Uh, the, uh, the, these were survivors of the last world. 
and they talked about how they survive. And they, they're, they're in rock petroglyphs. There is an effort now amongst uh, certain people in the indigenous world to collect these uh, so that we can hear the messages clearly uh, about how they survive. And perhaps this is time after the grand ceremony um, and that's going to be decided not by us, but by whatever happens with this grand ceremony uh, to talk about what physically is needed. One of the things here in Alaska that we talked about was that um, we had a very sophisticated barter, trade, and sharing cultures that were in, in the entire Western Hemisphere. Uh, and uh, we could go anywhere with these protocols and, and barter trade and, and share. My people, I found out when I went to Patagonia, um, um, uh, there were seven spiritual leaders from the uh, Quechua and Amar people that came down the mountaintops by horseback for two weeks just to meet me. And I thought, wow, this must be really important. Well, when I got to the sacred uh, ceremonial grounds that were held by the Mapuche. The seven spiritual leaders were there. They wanted to know how I, I got my name and, and um, uh, what it means and, and all these kinds of things about my name. And I told them and they, they, get, they got very excited because they have exactly the same name given in exactly the same way. And it means exactly the same thing. And that was affirmation to them that our people in Alaska, in the Bering Sea, went down there uh, to South America during these hard times. Uh, and uh, um, and uh, these people from the Quechua and Mar were the go-betweens between us and the people of South America. And what we traded were healing songs and healing herbs that we got from South America. So uh, I, I would strongly recommend the indigenous peoples uh, to uh, think about this and feel it out, that we need to reset up this um, uh, sharing and, and bartering and trade and everything else uh, uh, throughout the entire Western Hemisphere. The, the, the Eastern Hemisphere will, will probably do the same thing, but um, this is a time now that this is needed. Don Alejandro, uh, who was a keeper of the day calendar for the Mayans, said, we have very little time left. Humans have very little time left. Um, and we tend to focus on individual things, climate change and, and all these kinds of things. And um, did I get cut off? No, you're on. Okay. Um, yeah, the, that we need now to act uh, both spiritually and physically in this time. And the, uh, the elders that I work with say that we have very little time left as human beings. It's not going to be in, in uh, uh, 2040 that something's going to, you know, the, the floods will be bad and all that kind of thing. It, it's, it's going to happen sooner than that. And so um, let's uh, see if we can come to agreement uh, on any, anything else that anyone wants to share and what you think about uh, setting up uh, you know, what I did in uh, the Great Lakes was to ask the tribes if they would establish the barter trade sharing thing uh, amongst themselves through treaty and then expand out and go to other areas until we've got the complete network. Um, and so um, I'm advising uh, Native people and uh, all the other people 
to consider the same thing that we've got to be able to, uh, because Don Alejandro said, we are going to go through some hard times and that we need to prepare for that. And at time, he said, the time is now. Okay, open it up. Uh, please, may I thank Mutima Imani? Hello? Yes. Uh, please, may I thank Mutima Imani for speaking about Africa and befriending darkness. I love that. I'm blessed. I, I grew up in Africa. I was assisted by so many African people. Best friends were Rastafarians and the Zulu ancestors have assisted me. And I thank you, Imani, for being here. Thank you, Lynn. Um, as to as to offerings, um, as um, thank yous and and other offerings, we will have a few minutes at the end for uh, everyone who wants to put something in the chat box or also be nourished by the chat box. Um, for now, uh, this is the end of this uh, caucus, which was very long. We are uh, already three days into the conference. Some people are pretty tired. So I'm requesting kindly to, to remain focused on the questions. And then um, tomorrow also, there's gonna be more wonderful sessions and we wanna keep people's energy. So please, if someone has something around the discussion that Kuyach is requesting, um, we're asking for the words to be right to um, honor everyone's energy and uh, we will adjourn soon. I would, uh, I would like to, well, thank you for, for letting me speak. Uh, I'd like to, to speak the name of Ray Williams into the circle. Ray Williams was uh, one of the elders who was in the, uh, the documentary that was earlier mentioned with the Wisdom Keepers. Unfortunately, uh, Squai Kwai had a stroke two years ago and has been unable to speak since then. But I would just like to, to reiterate or say that the teachings that he was passing on to some of us through what he called the Indigenous Mind Group, was in direct alignment with uh, the talks about opening the, the trade routes and that there's that it's time. So thank you so much for, for bringing that up. And, uh, and I just want to say a blessing for Ray. He's still with us, and I will pass on um, what's been done today to him when I see him this week. Thank you so much, Jeffrey. Thank it's you. actually another documentary, but uh, we we uh, we saw you know the work of of Kwai Kwai, of Ray Williams, and we're very appreciative. So thank you for passing it on to him and blessings and and healing. Yeah, and very quickly, yeah, Al, uh, in talking about black, uh, the color, the sacred color black, uh, we were all born inside the womb, which is black and dark. And uh, we have eliminated uh, darkness out of fear. So we light our cities up so bright that we can't even see the stars anymore. And we put uh, um, uh, our elders, in, in mostly in the uh, white, sacred white color world, in uh, ho uh, foster or uh, senior citizen homes. And when I go there, I see just half the or, or more of the people with dead eyes. They're not alive anymore because they are not, uh, the elders need uh, a sense of value and where we, where they get their value from is from others around them that they love. And that uh, it's, uh, it's a gross waste of wisdom, life wisdom that they have. Uh, and so 
uh, we need to uh, rethink and reorganize ourselves so we can see the truth in what is happening in the world. And one of those truths is the, the violation of the sacred black color. And uh, uh, mind you, there has been, uh, uh, when the elders got together to first decide what they're gonna do to hide the sacred teaching, they, they knew that um, uh, uh, women are going to be grossly violated. They knew that uh, uh, high priestess cultures would be destroyed. They knew that medicine people will be, uh, women will be destroyed. And uh, ultimately, Mother Earth, all things feminine. They were birthed from feminine. All of our ways that uh, have existed for since the beginning of time uh, and before were feminine. Even the sacred instructions come from the womb, and and uh, and so we. It's no question, no no wonder why we ignore that. So uh, anyway, uh, we've got uh, one thing that we have consensus on, which is a grand ceremony, uh, and uh, both physically and spiritually, we need to uh, act on this. Now we need to act on this now, and uh, uh, and so uh, I think as a result of this, we can probably have subsequent uh, gatherings. But on the focus of uh, doing ceremony between all cultures in four directions, um, and uh, that Earth Repair. Uh, thank you for allowing us to be uh, here. Uh, in this forum, um, and uh, I'm hoping that all the participants, especially the non-native participants, uh, uh, listen to what these elders had to say because uh, this is what's needed now. And um, then any other things that we might discuss, uh, that's gonna be up to the future. So, Michael, uh, do you have any closing words? Um, just a queer. Also, Ode wants to have closing word on behalf of the um, non-Indigenous people here. And then I thought maybe Ia could give the final closing. But, yeah, let's hear, hear from Mike. Okay. If he is willing, uh, she will do the closing prayer. Michael? Um, well, I would like to express my gratitude for everything that's happened here and all the words. Very important stuff, and I will support you any way I can. So, uh, grand ceremony, um, uh, what a wonderful idea. And I would just say this. I put on a barter fair, which barter is between people, because it's, been, it's very important for us to do, create the alternative economies. But spiritual 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 thank you very much that's good see you tomorrow and i just want to take the opportunity michael is behind this whole summit and he gave us the platform to do this and all the things that have been happening for the past three days and tomorrow so a huge thank you michael and uh, i hope you get some sleep after after tomorrow and ode if you can take it away and then Ia. Yes. My video has been working all the weekend, and now in front of you all, my video is shaking. <laughs> and I am shaking too, because these hours with you, I can't even show my white face here. What's happening? And I'm just really grateful, really grateful for listening to all of you and i would just like us all white people being here now sending you all our love and our care and we want you to receive the trust 
Again, we want you to receive a new space of understanding between all of us. I'm so grateful to have heard you. And I hope we'll keep building a constructive path all together because we need you and we need your wisdom. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now, uh, Ia will uh, do the closing. Thank you, thank you. I'm gonna ask all of us to, if you don't have your feet on the floor, put them flat on the floor and just sit up straight and align your body with the earth. And imagine that your feet that are on the floor, that those feet are like roots sinking into the earth. And as those roots are sinking into the earth, Imagine that those roots are spreading out around this earth and that you are connected to each one of those directions and each one of you are connected in that direction. And imagine those roots coming up like trees and reaching up in those branches and those branches are spreading out like arms. And imagine that those are your arms. And imagine that that the womb opens up and it receives in that central point. Each one of you are connected in this way. And then imagine that you all represent that universal and biblical card moving around and connecting you in this way to all of these branches. And imagine that they are moving upward and upward through those channels and they move it up into your heart. And imagine that heart energy spreading out and that you are connected, each one of you, to that heart space. And see if you can listen and tune into that heartbeat. And just listen. Listen to that heartbeat. And feel that heartbeat that said, I am the heart. And I will never leave you. I am that heartbeat. Listen, listen now, my dear brothers, my dear sisters, to this heartbeat. For we are that heartbeat, that one heartbeat. And imagine that that heartbeat is lifting up. And just imagine that as it lifts up, it reaches up into the heavens and reaches all to all of those channels. And it spreads out and it pulls down from that source. And that source also is listening to that heartbeat. It's listening to that heartbeat. And imagine that you're pulling that heartbeat back down into that center place. and feel that connection between that source energy and the earth energy, and feel that they are wrapped around you and that you're walking out with this energy all wrapped around you. Even though you're individual conduits here, you can take this energy and remember that you individually can remember this energy in your daily prayer, in your daily awakened time. And you too can practice this energy and remember that you individually can send this energy out into the collective body of Earth, connecting all of us human species together. For we are one heartbeat. We are one people. And now bring that to your heart. And listen. And listen. 
to each heart and take this into your dream time. Listen to my heartbeat. I shall not believe you. Listen to the heartbeat. I shall never leave you. And so it be. And so it be. I shall. Thank you, Rhea, and thank all of you. Uh, remember that we're all gurus now, and the answers to your questions are in your hearts about what you must do during this time. Thank you all very much, and we'll see you tomorrow.